Hornet Nation Broadcast Network, 101.7 KSAM Huntsville, and on the KSAM mobile app. Now, the Hornet Nation pregame show with Brian Adams and the voice of Hornet Nation, Carlos Zimmerman. And a pleasant good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We welcome you back to Trailer Stadium here in side Richmond Rosenberg Texas for tonight's matchup the regular season finale in UIL 5A Division 2 Region 3 District 10 tonight Huntsville takes on the Richmond Randall Lions to decide who is going to come away with the number two seed and the all-important home field advantage in the first round of the playoffs coming up next week live from the Pinnacle Realty Advisors broadcast booth I'm Carlos Zimmerman alongside of me is the former Hornet quarterback Brian Adams the Hornets entering tonight five and four on the regular season they are four and one overall what a year it has been for the Huntsville Hornets, way ahead of schedule in, in terms of how this team has been developing over the last couple of years since really the soft rebuild began, but it has worked really well in many critical games, and we saw that last week against the Brenham Cubs where the Hornets were able to bounce back, have faced a lot of adversity in the ball game, and they were able to come back and come away with a huge victory against the Brenham. As I welcome in my broadcast partner, Brian, what a game that was. The Hornets were able to turn it around after being down at late points in the ball game, they went three and out on <clears throat> excuse me three and out on one drive, and you thought for a minute, well, here's where the momentum turns for Brennan. But the Hornet defense stepped up. Really, all three facets of the ball game last week for the Hornets played to perfection. Incredible game last week against Brenham. You know, it was uh, it was a must win for the Hornets, and it was one of the best games, Carlos, that I've seen. I think I told you I've seen in the last three or four or five years. And it was all aspects of the game coming together. It was the offense, defense, special teams, everybody contributing and doing what they had to do to get that win. And uh, it, it was exciting. It had everything you want in a high school football game. And here we are, man, the last uh, regular season game of the year, and it is hugely important. Absolutely it is. If you're just joining us here on 101.7 KSAM, the KSAM mobile app, and on the KSAM YouTube channel, we welcome you in on the Charlie's Used Cars pregame show. Still getting ready for Huntsville versus Randall tonight in the regular season finale. But, again, looking back last week against Brenham, the Hornets, they just – they fought tooth and nail. It was really the tale of two halves, but they were both really good halves, to be honest with you. The Hornets got out to a hot start. Marcus Lewis led the offense very well, was able to get them out to a 15-0 lead. Then Brenham had their chance to respond, and they did, taking a 16-15 lead at one point there. But then Lewis was able to lead the team on another great drive, backed up by an Isaiah Collins interception that really changed the momentum for the Hornets going into halftime to have that 21-16 lead at the halftime break. Ryan, it's important, and it's amazing to see that the offense can still facilitate with two different quarterbacks running the offense. Absolutely. Both quarterbacks did really a terrific job. Both of them have different skill sets, and they bring different things to the ball game, and they both contributed in a very big way. And that's what's exciting about high school football, man. I mean, you'll have guys that play multiple positions. Juwan Giddens, for example, you know, we talk about him a lot. And, and now he's on the defensive side of the ball, but, man, he's played quarterback, running back. I mean, he could do everything, and that's what you need out of somebody in football. I guess we can call Jawan the Craig Biggio of, of, of the Huntsville <laughs> yeah. Hornets because he's played every position, it seems like, in his career, <laughs> yeah. and he's blossomed as that Mike linebacker for the Hornets, and we'll talk more about the defense coming up in just a little bit. Looking at the second half for that game between Brenham and Huntsville, man, did Huntsville – where they were able to stifle Brenham, but then Brenham was able to bounce back. They took the lead, and then they made the switch at quarterback. Austin Taylor came in, and then he was able to continue to facilitate the offense, moving the ball down the field, struck with Savion Conte to give the Hornets a one-point lead. And then the Hornets would get a field goal later from Joseph Mejia. That's the third phase of the game that the Hornets played very well. Then Brenham struck back and were able to take a lead. And then for a while in that fourth quarter, it was kind of a stalemate of the defenses. Brenham had the four-point lead, but then Huntsville would not be able to figure things out offensively. And then came that penultimate drive of the ball game, the last one of the game for Huntsville. Austin Taylor laid up probably the most beautiful throw we have seen in his young career, a 52-yard strike really through the air from Austin Taylor to Melton Green the third, that got it down inside that 10-yard line, and that changed the game just like that. Amazing. It really was. And, you know, in the, when the game started, it, it was, you know, the run game for the Hornets was working really well. And Marcus was doing a terrific job moving the Hornets down the field, getting them in position uh, to stay with Brenham. And Brenham was a very good team. I mean, seesaw back and forth, man. I mean, you really weren't sure how it would end up. And then, you know, in the second half, uh, Austin came in. They started opening up the throwing game, kind of loosened that defense up a little bit. 
they did what they had to do, got into position, and ultimately won the game. It was incredible, man. And ultimately, the reason why the Hornets won the game was the missed field goal at the very end of yeah. that ball game. Because, yeah, the defense did have a little bit of a flub there at the end with the penalty for the untimed down for the field goal. But a missed field goal for the Hornets on a kick that was supposed to push to the left, but it went straight and missed to the right of the uprights. And that's what gave the Hornets a huge win to put them into position where they are at tonight against the Randall Lions. And more on Randall when we continue on here on the Charlie's Used Cars pregame show. Time to take you inside the numbers brought to you by Charlie's Used Cars. Looking at these two teams, man, is there a big discrepancy right at the top? Randall, do they do well on offense? And they have scored 441 points this season in nine games to the Hornets 291. That is a very electric offense with a quarterback that transferred in in Tyler Scrabonic. It'll be paramount that Huntsville's defense step up to the plate tonight because Randall, they've been good on offense. 1,950 yards through the air. Their touchdown to interception ratio, it's 13 to 1. 26 touchdowns for two inter and two interceptions. 2,000 plus yards on the ground with 28 rushing touchdowns. This is a very high powered offense, Brian, that Huntsville's defense will have their hands full of tonight. You know what, Carlos, when you look inside the numbers like this, it is a stark contrast. I mean, on paper, the Lions look much stronger than the Hornets. The reality is this team Huntsville has is much better than the paper dictates. It is going to be an exciting uh, match between these two teams, and there is so much at stake. Man, it ought to be a wild one tonight. Absolutely it will be. I mean, you look at the defensive side of things, Huntsville is very powered up on the defensive side. 13 interceptions this year, 10 defensive fumbles forced, and they were able to – able to just do that well all last week against Brenham. However, here's the one discrepancy as well. The Hornets have had their struggles with turnovers on the offensive side. 15 turnovers to the six for Randall. But look at the defensive interceptions. Lions have not had a single interception this season, and they forced only one fumble. So their defense ha has its holes in it, and that's where Huntsville's offense can step to the plate and make something happen. Basically, we say all that to say that this is going to be a very even matchup tonight, and you can't ask for much better than that on a Thursday night in the season finale coming up here in just a little while. Yeah, how exciting is that? I, I mean, you know, take the traffic out of the situation. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the drive down true. here out of the equation, man, and it's, it's exciting to be here tonight. And, and it is, man. There is so much on the line with this ball game. I mean, the winner ought to get at least one home field uh, ball game in the playoffs, and that is a huge thing to have. So both teams, they're going to give it everything they got. It's going to be a great ball game. I'm excited to call this game with Carlos, and it is going to be uh, just tremendous. Absolutely. Uh, real quick here before we step aside and take a break, that was your Inside the Numbers brought to you by Charlie's Used Cars. Let's look at the standings here in District 10 5A Division 2. Lake Creek, they play Brenham tomorrow. They have clinched a district title, at least a share of the district title. Here's the scenarios for you. If Lake Creek loses to Brenham and Huntsville wins tonight, both of them will share the district. Lake Creek gets the one seed because of the head-to-head -head with Huntsville and the loss a couple of weeks ago for the Hornets. The Hornets would get the two. Now, this is where it gets a little crazy. If Lake Creek beats Brenham outright, they're the outright district champions, they get the one. If Huntsville loses tonight to Randall, Randall moves to the two, Huntsville drops to the three. If Brenham were to beat Lake Creek, Brenham would be tied with Huntsville in a Huntsville loss. I know I'm throwing a lot at you here, Brian, but uh, if Brenham wins and Huntsville loses, Br Huntsville gets the tiebreaker for the three with the head-to-head -head win over Brenham last week. That's why last week's win was so huge. So here's the really the big message for the Huntsville Hornets tonight. Simple, three words, win the game. That's all you got to do tonight. I know it's easier said than done because this is a good Randall team that you're up against, but if they're able to do that tonight, they will be cruising on the path to a great run into the postseason one year really ahead of schedule that a lot of people thought. You know, and, and, I, and I tell you what, it is there are so many scenarios, and you said it best, the Hornets can control their destiny by winning the ball game. Just go out and take care of your business. Don't worry about anything else. Win the game, and everything else will work out like it's supposed to. And we'll look further on here in our pregame show, and I'm coming up in our countdown to kickoff as well, as to who potentially Huntsville can see in the postseason coming up next week when we look at the teams from District 9 and how those games are going to pan out later on here on the pregame show. We're going to step aside and take a break. Coming up next, Southern Talk brought to you by Charlie's Used Cars. I caught up with head coach Rodney Southern yesterday at his brand new Spankin' Field House. That is coming your way next after this on the Hornet Nation Broadcast Network live from Trailer Stadium in Richmond. Tim Rushing here with Charlie's Used Cars. If you have not been by to see the great selection of quality pre-owned vehicles we have in stock, do yourself a favor and come see us at 230 I-45 South in Huntsville. Charlie's Used Cars is a family-owned and operated business serving 
auto needs for 50 years with superior customer service. Besides quality vehicles, Charlie's also has a service center where we can help with your auto repair needs and routine service and state inspections. Come by and see us or visit us online at charliesusedcars.com. Charlie's Used Cars, 230 I 45 South in Huntsville. Come see us. This is Southern Talk with Huntsville head coach Rodney Southern, sponsored by Charlie's Used Cars. Carlos Zimmerman here with head coach Rodney Southern for another edition of Southern Talk brought to you by Charlie's Used Cars. Coach, going into this regular season finale, obviously coming off of a big win against Brenham. Just final thoughts on that ball game before we look ahead to this big one. Well, it was a, a really kind of a gutsy win, obviously, and that's, that's the kind of wins you want to get uh, as you can try to build some momentum, obviously, going into the playoffs. Uh, you know, I thought our kids performed well. I thought we had a lull the second quarter. Uh, which sometimes a lull might be you and sometimes it might be execution by the other team. And I think it was a little bit of both. Um, but I thought, <clears throat> obviously, you know, Austin stepping in late and making some big throws and obviously making a huge throw with a minute and whatever left. Uh, but our kids never quit and they competed extremely well. And to be able to finish that game out like that and – you know, and finally have a field goal go our way versus going <laughs> through the middle of the uprights. Uh, but that's a big one because it puts us in this position tonight to be able to play for the second seed and an opportunity to potentially get a home playoff game. How have the guys been looking in practice coming into this ball game? Well, you know, it's a short week, so we brought them in Saturday. Of course, you know, on Saturdays after a win, you always feel a little better than you do when you lose. So we worked them out good. And then Monday was a normal Monday, but Tuesday morning was a Tuesday. Tuesday afternoon was technically a Wednesday. Uh, so like I told them this morning, today's Thursday uh, in terms of your schedule. Uh, so, you know, and we worked out again this morning and got a little bit of time on the field to do some two minute stuff. and. Um, so overall, we've had a good week. We got grades in, and grades were really good. And uh, so we're set for tonight and obviously set for the playoffs next week. Looking at uh, Randall, obviously a completely different team this year. They've brought in a couple through through transfers, and then you know their kids from last year have gotten even better this year. What's your outlook on the Rand on the Randall Lions? Well, I think the quarterback transfer was huge for him. He's a sophomore. He's a big kid. Uh, he's got a strong arm, uh, and, and I think, and this is just me, but I think philosophy wise, they really like throwing the ball but they've got two dynamic. Of course, they moved their little quarterback from a year ago, and he played quarterback and played running back some too, but they moved him to receiver slash running back, and they've got a freshman running back that's very similar to the running back at Brenham. So, uh, you know, we're going to have to do a great job defensively of corralling those guys and get people on the ground. Don't give up the, the – two-yard pass it turns into an 80-yard touchdown uh, and we got to get pressure on this quarterback he loves to stand in the pocket and you know he'll take deep shots when he can but but I think they really would love to throw the ball even more than they do but their two running backs are so talented you know sometimes they just raise up and throw the ball to one of those guys and it's essentially a toss they just do it overhand and uh but I think the quarterbacks made them uh, obviously a lot better and the fact that their their skill guys are a year older. Uh, number 17, their, their H-back slash tight end to me is the key to us defensively because, you know, he dictates a lot of what they do in the run game. Um, so we've got to know where he is and where he's leading because a lot of times he's the either the lead blocker or the kick out block. So, uh, but number one, you know, he's a freshman, but he's a 10, 6, 10, 700 meter guy and he can fly. So we've got to do a good job getting him on the ground. And then let's flip to the other side, of course, for your offense. And what if, what are they going to be up against defensively? Well, I think they're I think they're better up front than people initially gave him credit for. I know he's had a couple injuries over there, uh, but athletically, their perimeter people are really really talented and and athletic, you know. And that's probably the overall of their team. This this might be the most athletic team all 22 at any point in time. 
you know, even their kicker's a, a really good athlete and a great kicker. So, um, but I think defensively, what we're going to have to do against them defensively is, you know, we've got to be able to run the ball and get first downs, which is a kind of a given. But um, there are some things that we think we can take advantage of in terms of the run game. But, you know, if we have to throw it, you know, we feel good about both quarterbacks throwing the ball. Uh, now, how are you guys looking uh, health-wise going into the season finale? Well, I, I think we're okay. Treshawn, you know, got rolled up on the other night. He won't play tonight. Uh, but everybody else is, you know, other than late season bumps and bruises and scratches, you know, everybody's good. But, you know, Treshawn, it, it didn't do any damage. But, you know, just out of precaution, you know, we're, we're not going to risk a guy getting hurt again because – the way that looked on film, it could have been a lot worse than it was. Coach, obviously now the guys have been able to practice out in the elements. This is going to be one of their first cold weather games of the year. Obviously, you have to think about that in aspects because, uh, you know, when it's cold, it's harder to grip the ball. Just what have you, how have you guys handled uh, the swift weather change? Well, the big thing is, you know, we always go out Tuesday morning. And, you know, of course, it was raining and cold Tuesday morning. And Tuesday or Monday afternoon, and a little bit Tuesday morning. So, you know, we've gotten technically because we treated Monday exactly like a normal Monday. We practiced Monday, and of course, it was when that front moved in, so it was raining and cool. Tuesday morning, we treated like a normal Tuesday morning, and we went out and it was cold. And then Tuesday afternoon, we treated like a Wednesday afternoon. Uh, so we've kind of condensed everything, but we still got the things we feel like we needed in terms of preparation. But, you know, they've been in the cold now uh, and it's supposed to be 63 degrees at kickoff. So, you know, if it's like that, it'll get cooler as the night goes on, but it should be great football weather tonight. And last thing, Coach, uh, obviously a lot riding on this ball game. It's a winner take all for the number two seed and getting to host a playoff game in the in the opening round and even possibly further. Just uh, what are your keys to getting it done? Well, we got to be really sound defensively and and do a really good job tackling on the perimeter. Um, offensively, we've got to, you know, and it sounds coach talk, but we've got to be able to sustain some drives and try not to have that lull. We've had a lull in the third quarters at times. We've had a lull in the second. We've had a lull starting games sometimes. The last two or three games, we've started extremely well and, uh, and had that lull late second or early third. So we've got to get away from that. And then, you know, we've got to make one big play in the kicking game. All right, Coach, appreciate your time. Best of luck in the season finale. All right, thank you. This has been Southern Talk with head coach Rodney Southern. Brought to you by Charlie's Used Cars. This is the Hornet Nation Broadcast Network. Powered by K-San Sports. Tim Rushing here with Charlie's Used Cars. If you have not been by to see the great selection of quality pre-owned vehicles we have in stock, do yourself a favor and come see us at 230 I-45 South in Huntsville. Charlie's Used Cars is a family-owned and operated business serving the auto needs for 50 years with superior customer service. Besides quality vehicles, Charlie's also has a service center where we can help with your auto repair needs and routine service and state inspections. Come by and see us or visit us online at charliesusedcars.com. Charlie's Used Cars, 230 I-45 South in Huntsville. Come see us. Nelson Amaya's Collision has been proudly serving Walker County since 1999. Within walking distance from Sam Houston State University, they pride themselves in offering their services to you for your students to get their vehicle back to pre loss condition and back on the road. Come see Nelson Amaya's Collision off Sycamore Avenue for all your automotive paint and body needs. That's Nelson Amaya's Collision, a proud supporter of Hornet football. Call them at 936-439-4545. This is Kadarian Easley, number 55 defensive lineman, and you're listening to Huntsville Hornet football on 101.7 KSM. Sting them, Hornets. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, on the Hornet Nation Broadcast Network, powered by KSAM Sports, live in Richmond, Texas, for tonight's regular season finale in UIL 5A Division II between the Huntsville Hornets and the Richmond Randall Lions. Continuing on here on the Charlie's Used Cars pregame show, time to take a look here at our player profile, brought to you by Charlie's Used Cars. I'm surprised we haven't had him on as the player profile yet, because, man, is he a force in that linebacker core for the Huntsville 
Louisville Hornets. That is Shiloh Jones, the junior linebacker, has been impressive this year. The six foot one, 210 pound linebacker. He's a three sport athlete. He's got football, track, and basketball on his docket. He was the defensive player of the week versus Lake Creek. He has been incredible since he's been up here on varsity. He spent time as a freshman out there on varsity. So by the end of his Huntsville Hornet career, he will be a four year varsity letterman. And boy, with the way he's been playing, someone at the upper level is going to be very excited to have him on his team one of these days. Brian, what can you say about the young guy? Well, Shiloh Jones is so exciting to watch. He is, uh, if there's one word, I guess, uh, to maybe summarize Shiloh Jones in my mind, in my opinion, is fearless. This guy will absolutely lay you out, and he is very athletic, very talented, multi-sport athlete. Just a great young man, and you're right, Carlos. I figured that uh, he's going to have uh, plenty of opportunities after high school to play some more football. Absolutely he will. He's going to be a force tonight for the Huntsville Hornets, a part of that linebacker course, flanked out there by Jawan Giddens and McCork Norman, as well as another cast of characters because we've said it all year long. The depth of this defense is incredible, and a lot of them are coming back next year. So this team and this defense, and really the team as a whole, is going to be someone to watch going forward, and they are led in that linebacker core out there by that of Shiloh. Jones. That's your player profile brought to you by our friends at Charlie's Used Cars. Now we're going to transition over to our sideline pass segment. I'm going to see if I can get the attention here of our sideline reporter here in Luke Scott. He's on the far side of the field here. Yep, he, he hears me now. But <laughs> as we continue along here on the Charlie's Used Cars pregame show, Luke Scott down on the sidelines here in our sideline pass segment. Luke, let me ask you, how are you, my friends? Regular season finale should be fun. Oh, yeah. Uh, great game, and, you know, it makes it even better that there's a lot of district implications and playoff implications on the line tonight here as we're about 25 minutes out, Carlos. Uh, a lot of energy on the sideline here. Team looks fired up, so it, it looks to be a pretty fun fun game coming to us. And, you know, they're coming off of a lot of momentum uh, after the win over Brenham, winning on a missed field goal there at the very end. And they're obviously going to take that into this matchup tonight. It's going to be paramount that they are able to keep this momentum up and not get complacent because, yes, were they able to take care of this Randall team a year ago? Yeah, but this Randall team, Luke, they are very, very scary this year. Yeah, I mean, you know, second place in the district right now, and, you know, they've beaten everyone that we've played except uh, Lake Creek, and so they, you know what you're getting into. Uh, not the strongest schedule in the preseason, but uh, still took care of business, and you have to respect that. Uh, Randall seems to have a very good team. they got a great running back on their team, and they've been able to, and mind the way, as, and they've been able to, to dominate their opponents throughout the year. So Huntsville's going to have everything coming to them, and, and you're right, you know, you're coming off a big win uh, against Brenham, a, a last second win, if you will. Uh, you can't get too high from that. Uh, you got to come to this game like it's just any other game here um, and just try to execute play by play, drive by drive. Hey, uh, Luke, this is Brian. Hey, what are the field conditions like out there before this game gets started tonight? Yeah, field conditions seem to be really good. I mean, this is this is prime weather right here. It's uh, about 60 degrees, a little less than 60 degrees. It's going to drop down here a little bit. Uh, and the wind coming uh, from my right side this way. What is that? Uh, That's east to west. East to west. There you go. Uh, so it should be pretty nice conditions. It's going to drop down into the low 50s and maybe the high 40s uh, around past halftime. So it's going to be a little chilly, but uh, that's football weather. That's something you just got to deal with. Uh, but as the field feels phenomenal. Luke, looking at both quarterbacks there, obviously they saw a lot of time last week against Brennan. Both of them have gotten ample playing time this year. So regardless of who takes the field tonight, this offense should be facilitated very well. What's going to be the key, whoever takes the field? Yeah, I mean, it's all about establishing the passing game. You know, we're going to be without uh, Treshawn Brown tonight, uh, which is, you know, one of our best running backs on the team. So you're going to have to look at your quarterback to try to fill in some gap there and try to produce for a guy that's, you know, not able to play tonight. Uh, Austin Taylor seems to be really comfortable throwing the ball, find his man in the pocket. I mean, last week when he came in the third quarter, it was just a huge uh, momentum change there, throwing the huge you know, bomb there to Melton Green the third, and that really changed the game there at the end. Uh, then he turned the page to Marcus Lewis, and Marcus Lewis, we, we all know what we can do on his feet. Uh, with him, it's just patience in, in the, in the um, pocket and trying to find his man uh, down the field. So you got a dual threat quarterback, and you got a pocket passer. And not saying that Austin can't run, but he can do both. But you got two quarterbacks that are able to do multiple things, and that's going to make it tough on Randall. You know, they're going to have to game plan for two different quarterbacks coming into this game. And I expect we see both uh, guys coming in. 
And Luke, real quick here, we'll flip to the defensive side of things. We talked about Randall in the open. 26 touchdowns and two interceptions on the offensive side, but they have not been able to generate anything on defense. But we know what Huntsville has done on the defensive side. They will have to play their best kind of ball yeah. for 48 minutes tonight. How do they do that? Yeah, and it starts up front with Huntsville's defense. You know, when you have Kadarian Easley, Zach Moss, uh, you know, there's just so many guys on that front. You get the linebacker core. Man, they really do a good job stuffing the run and making you, you know, have long third downs. And that's where you get in trouble. The thing about Randall is they've been just fine on offense. So, you know, it's going to be a challenge, but you got to win the battle up front here to beat this Randall offense. And then Luke, of course, lots of playoff implications riding on this one tonight. If Huntsville wins, they are the two seed out of the district and will host a playoff game more than likely against an old foe, an old rival in Fort Bend Marshall, depending on how that game pans out. They're playing Dayton tonight as Fort Bend Marshall. The other teams that are in the question here, Texas City and Nederland, they play each other tomorrow. So there's a lot that is going into this. And if Nederland somehow pulls off an upset over Texas City, oh, is that going to make it a hodgepodge as to who Huntsville's going to end up facing? But we do know this, if they win tonight, they will have the two seed and are in control of home field advantage in the first round. What are your keys to get that win? Uh, keys to the win tonight is it, definitely get some early stops here on offense and you can't get behind you know, our deep on defense. And, and to be on offense, you just can't get behind uh, penalties. That's another big thing. You can't find a way to kill yourself you know, in the penalties, uh, whether it's early holding calls, early false starts, botch snaps. You know, it's, it's the simple things. Uh, you know, that will really hurt you in this game. So if you can start out clean, you start out good. And if you, you know, if you can hop out to a two possession lead here, you know, after the first quarter, you know, you're looking in prime shape. You just got to find a way to get out there and find some stops. All right, that's your sideline pass segment there. Luke, great job as always down there. We'll come to you throughout the ball game here tonight and uh, try to stay warm down there, bud. Will do. We'll step aside and take a break here on the Charlie's Used Cars pregame show. We'll get Brian's keys to the game when we come back on the Hornet Nation Broadcast Network live in Richmond. AB Squared Self Storage is your local go-to self-storage facility that can help give you the extra space you need, big or small. From non-climate and climate-controlled storage to parking spaces for your car, boat, trailer, and RV, they have it all. AB Squared Self Storage has 24-hour computerized gate access, around-the-clock security camera monitoring, no long-term lease commitment, and convenient payment options. Give them a call today at 936-755-5000 or reserve your space online at www.ab2selfstorage.com. DWFG and more insurance have been proudly serving the Huntsville and Walker County area since 2003. Ranked number one in Texas as an independently owned insurance provider, our independence affords us the freedom to shop insurance carriers and coverages that best suits our client-specific needs. TWFG offers personal and commercial, life, health, and flood insurance. Call Waylon Moore at 936-293-8121 or drop by 1212 10th Street in Huntsville, Texas at TWFG and more insurance. Insurance. Our policy is caring. Courage, integrity, perseverance, commitment, not just the job. This is a career with a purpose. The Texas Department of Criminal Justice is hiring correctional officers now. Full and part-time positions available, no experience required, paid training, great health care and retirement, and opportunities for base pay increases with continued service in the first year. Apply now at tdcj.texas.gov slash co. That's tdcj.texas.gov slash co. Serve Texas with purpose. It's always game time at Gamers Grove, Huntsville's friendly local game store located at 12, 12 14th Street. Family owned and operated since 2012, Gamers Grove carries a wide range of tabletop games and accessories for everyone board games, card games, miniatures, and more. With a huge game room open for free casual gaming and exciting competitive events, Gamers Grove provides a friendly place where people can play games, make friends, and become a part of an ever-growing community. That's Gamers Grove, located at 1212 14th Street in Huntsville. Back here on the Charlie's Used Cars pregame show, live from the Pinnacle Realty Advisors broadcast booth in Richmond, Texas at Trailer Stadium for tonight's regular season finale between the Huntsville Hornets and the Richmond Randall Lions. Carlos Zimmerman here alongside Ryan Adams. Luke Scott down on the sidelines for us tonight. Time to get your keys to the ball game tonight. Huntsville, again, we've said it since last week. They win tonight. They get the two seed, and there will be a playoff game played at Huntsville ISD Stadium in its debut year. So wouldn't that be sweet if it can happen? But 
It'll be a 48-minute ball game tonight that the Hornets will have to navigate against a very good Randall team, much better compared to last season. It's really two different teams compared to last year, but we know this. They are going to give it everything they got. Brian, I'll bring you in here. How do they get it done tonight for Huntsville? Keys to the victory. Well, I think what is important, kind of uh, what uh, Luke alluded to a little bit, they have to play very clean football tonight, and they have to get out to a quick start offensively. Defensively, somebody has to help that offense out tonight and come up with a big play. Interception, fumble recovery, something like that to get momentum back on the Hornets' side. And again, move the chains, put points on the board, Carlos. If those things come together, this will be a Hornet win tonight. Well, you alluded to it. The Hornets got an interception and a fumble recovery a week ago against Brenham, but now the focus is on the Randall Lions. So we'll see what happens tonight between these very, very well-coached programs, and we'll be intrigued to see if Huntsville can pull off yet another big victory and set themselves on a path to host a playoff game. The other game that we're going to have our eye on tonight is Fort Ben Marshall versus Dayton. Fort Ben Marshall is in third place right now, oddly enough, a team that's normally flirting for the district title. Well, that's not in the picture this year. Port Natchez Groves is going to come away with the title in District 9. Texas City and Nederland, they've stepped it up this year as well. It has been a dogfight in the adjacent district to find out who is going to face Huntsville's district. If Huntsville wins tonight and Fort Ben Marshall wins against Dayton, they will lock horns next week at Huntsville ISD Stadium. If Randall were to pick up the win over Huntsville tonight and if some crazy stuff happens in District 9, oh boy, we're going to have a lot to sort out over the next couple of days to find out who where Huntsville will be going because there's tiebreakers that can't be broken with head-to-head. -head. You have to go to point differential at that point. It makes my head spin, so I'm not even going to try and sort that out for you guys tonight, but I do know this. All you need to worry about, folks in Hornet Nation, cheer Huntsville on to a victory tonight, and that is how Huntsville was able to host that opening round playoff game. We'll step aside and take a break, and we will preview what is to come on the Texas True Comfort Heating and Cooling Countdown to kick off after this. As that wrap, we'll wrap up the north side, or excuse me, <laughs> I'm all over the place. We'll wrap up the Charlie's Used Cars pregame show when we come back in a moment here on the Hornet Nation Broadcast Network. Now, ladies, our pleasure to... Exceeding all expectations for three generations, you can call us day or night. McWilliams Heating, Cooling, and Plumbing provides service you can salute from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. seven days a week with no overtime fees. Check our current air conditioning and plumbing service offers and schedule online today at callmcwilliams.com. License TLCLA 2150. All of East Texas knows when your AC goes, we got the best service round by far. We're not comfortable until you are. Proud supporter of Huntsville High School, Danny Doherty State Farm in Huntsville covers all your business, auto, home, life, and renter's insurance needs. Call or stop by the office and get a quote today. They will find the right policy to fit your needs. Call Danny Doherty State Farm Insurance at 936-295-2067. That's 936-295-2067. Or visit them at 2914 Montgomery Road in Huntsville. Kubota products provide the horsepower, versatility, and dependability to get the job done right. But that doesn't mean you can cut corners on your regular routine maintenance. Keep your equipment running smooth by bringing your Kubota mower, subcompact tractor, or hay series tractors into Huntsville Truck and Tractor for a tune-up or oil change today. Call one of our experts for any questions about your Kubota products. Or stop by Huntsville Truck and Tractor today, conveniently located at 2124 Highway 30 East in Huntsville. Or call us at 936-291-8103 to keep your Kubota running strong. The 17th Annual Radio Mash, presented by Bill Fick Ford, is December 6th and 7th at the HEB parking lot in Huntsville. Will you please answer the call once again and give generously? Your donation of toys, food, pet supplies, and gift cards stay in Huntsville and Walker County to aid local families and children. You make a smile happen. Thank you. From all of us at 101.7 KSAM. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, here on the Charlie Seuss Cars pregame show as we get ready to transition to the Texas True Comfort Heating and Cooling Countdown to kick off. Here's what we got queued up for all of you. We'll take a look at your game time forecast. It's a great night for high school football on a Thursday night in Southeast Texas. We'll also get a look at your starting lineups brought to you by Texas True Comfort Heating and Cooling. And we'll take a look around on the Texas high school football scoreboard and much more to come as we still get ready for kickoff between the Huntsville Hornets and the Randall Lions. A winner take all for the number two seed tonight in Richmond. The Texas True Comfort Heating and Cooling Countdown to kickoff is next on the Hornet Nation Broadcast Network.
Marissa. Huntsville ISD is the best place for children to be. We offer a full day pre-K center to advanced career and college options, along with a variety of extracurricular activities and award-winning fine arts, band and athletics programs, and excellent child nutrition and bus transportation services, bilingual ESL and GT program, special education services, and a career and technical education program that provides multiple certification and licensing options for students. Visit Huntsville-ISD.org. It's a great day to be a Hornet. We're building champions, everyone, every day. Exceeding all expectations for three generations, you can call us day or night. McWilliams Heating, Cooling, and Plumbing provides service you can salute from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. seven days a week with no overtime fees. Check our current air conditioning and plumbing service offers and schedule online today at callmcwilliams.com. Licensed TLCLA 2150. All of East Texas knows when your AC goes, we got the best service round by far. We're not comfortable until you are. This is the Huntsville Hornet High School Football Countdown to Kickoff, sponsored by Texas True Comfort Heating and Cooling. Here's Brian Adams and the voice of the Hornets, Carlos Zimmerman. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Richmond, Texas, and Trailer Stadium for tonight's matchup in the UIL 5A Division 2, Region 3, District 10, between the Randall Lions and your Huntsville Hornets. Welcome inside the Texas True Comfort Heating and Cooling countdown to kickoff. I'm Carlos Zimmerman. Alongside of me is Brian Adams. Luke Scott down on the sidelines for us this evening. Let's take a look here at your game time forecast on a Thursday night for high school football. Yeah, mostly clear skies. Some clouds layering here just a little bit. The temps will drop as we go overnight. It's currently 63 degrees outside right now down on the field with a southeast wind coming at about 8 miles an hour. The humidity is around 60%, so that's going to make it just a touch bit cooler as the night progresses. We'll dip down into the 50s as we go through the ball game, maybe even the high 40s by the end of this one tonight. So it's a cool night for football, but sometimes it feels like the cool nights are some of the best ones, and that's what we are hope we are in for for this evening's game between Huntsville and Randall. That's your game time weather forecast. I'll welcome in my broadcast partner, Brian Adams, once again. Brian, again, we said it throughout this, bro this broadcast so far. Huntsville, all they got to do is win. We know... It's easier said than done, but it has to take all three facets, just like it did last week against Brenham, to come away with a victory. It does. It's going to take a total team effort, and you just said it, Carlos. All three aspects have to play well, you know, offense, defense, special teams, and if they do that, they're going to have a victory just like they did last week. That's what happens when all three aspects of the game come together. You know, you have a, uh, you have a contest like we had last week against Brenham, and we came out on top. And hopefully uh, the same thing will happen here tonight. Fans still filing in here to Trailer Stadium. Randall's brought a great delegation here tonight at their home stadium. As for Huntsville, it's a little sparse over there, but the band is in the house. The cheers leaders are in the house. The GGs are in the house. So you know it's going to be a good ball game when you have all of those folks here. It's a long trip from Huntsville, about an hour and 45 minutes, two and a half hour if you include the traffic. But <laughs> yeah. man, oh man, we are excited for this one tonight here in the regular season finale. Let's take a look at the Texas High School football scoreboard and take a trip around Region three district 10 of course Huntsville and Randall the only game going tonight Lake Creek and Brenham they go tomorrow at 7 30 p.m. to decide whether Lake Creek will be the outright district champion at 6 and 0 or will Brenham play spoiler they are locked in at the four seed out of the district they will likely face Port Natchez Groves in the opening round Brian Rudder and Montgomery they're just playing for bragging rights here at the end of this season as both of them are eliminated from playoff contention now looking at the adjacent district the other important almighty important game tonight between Dayton and Fort Bend Marshall. They kick off at Ken Hall Stadium, not too far away from us, right at 7 o'clock as well. So if you look on the video stream in the upper right corner, we have got those score updates for you coming in throughout the night. Tomorrow, Nederland and Texas City, they meet each other. And like we said, there's a bunch of tiebreakers that could happen there if Nederland upsets Texas City based on how they performed against Fort Bend Marshall this year. Oh boy, it is going to be wild if Nederland pulls off an upset at Stingery Stadium in Texas City. Galena Park and Port Natchez Groves, they play each other tomorrow. And then on Saturday, Santa Fe and Fort Bend Willeridge, they play each other. But for, as for Santa Fe and Fort Bend Willeridge, that's another bragging rights kind of game as well as that both of them are eliminated from playoff contention. We're still about seven minutes away from kickoff here. Coming up next, we got your starting lineups brought to you by Texas True Comfort Heating and Cooling. When we come back on the Hornet Nation Broadcast Network. 
License number TACLB42958E. Don't sweat it. Stay cool with Texas True Comfort. Texas True Comfort will fix your broken AC system quickly any day of the week with no overtime fees. They can lower your cooling bills and keep your home cool and comfortable. Call 936-400-0049 to schedule your service today. Discounts for veterans, educators, first responders, and TDCJ personnel. See website for details. Texas True Comfort, veteran owned and operated. Your true comfort is guaranteed. TXTrue.com. Hometown proud, Hornet strong. KSAM is your hometown radio station. Back here in Richmond, Texas, just to the southwest of the fourth largest city in the United States of America, Houston. Glad to have you with us tonight on the Hornet Nation Broadcast Network, powered by KSAM Sports. You're in the Texas True Comfort Heating and Cooling countdown to kickoff as the teams are starting to embark out of their respective locker rooms as the Hornets and the Lions, they lock horns tonight in the regular season finale. Let's get to know the personnel now. Here for the Huntsville Hornets in your starting lineups. Brought to you by Texas True Comfort Heating and Cooling. Looking at the offense first, Austin Taylor. He will more than likely get the start tonight. We could also see Marcus Lewis throughout this ball game as well. So both quarterbacks will have to be on their A game tonight for the Hornets to come away with a win. Braylon Phelps, he is the starting running back tonight. Trayshawn Brown is out due to injury. They're taking their precautions with him to get him ready for the postseason. So Braylon Phelps, he gets the the nod tonight for the Huntsville Hornets. Three wide receivers, Savion Conte, Milton Green the third, and Peyton Pryor all had great weeks last week against Brenham. And then of course the guys up front, JT Kroll, John Trey Barkin, Brian Parker Jr., Daniel Cruz, and Trey Williams. They will be on their A game tonight for the Huntsville Hornets to try and protect whoever is in the backfield between Austin Taylor, Marcus Willett Lewis, and Braylon Phelps as well. One tight end for the Hornets as well in Jarius Single Terry. And then you flip to the defensive side of things. The Hornets Man, have they had a highly and high-powered defense all season long, has won them so many games, has kept them in so many games. We saw that against Lake Creek and as well as in the non-district as well. It starts with the guys up front, Zach Moss, Kadarian Easley, Noah Cummings, and Isaiah Lewis. You'll see Tyler Smith quite a bit as well. On that front front of the defensive line, it'll be paramount that they can get some pressure on Randall's quarterback to try and stir him up a little bit and hopefully make some plays happen for the Huntsville Hornets. Looking to the linebacker core, they have been a potent crew all season long. Shiloh Jones and McCord Norman as the outside linebackers, and Jawan Giddens, the Mike linebacker, who has been stellar since moving over to the defense, coming up here at this season and has been phenomenal. And then, of course, the secondary, led, of course, by the Texas Tech commit Isaiah Collins. We had him on the Hornet Nation Coaches Show on Monday night once again. He's flanked out there at the strong safety position of Cole Schroeder, who has been phenomenal here in the back half of the season. It's been great for the Hornets. And then the two corners, Jeremiah Winfrey and Brent Carroll, they will need to be cognizant of what Randall throws their direction. J-Bug usually lines up on the opposing side, but we've seen Brent Carroll on that opposing side of the defense as well. So watch for them to play very well coming up in tonight's ball game. That is your starting lineups brought to you by Texas True Comfort Heating and Cooling. As the teams have taken to the field, they're going to get lined up here for the national anthem here in just a few moments. Boy, oh boy, folks, is this going to be exciting. A wise man once said it doesn't get any better then this, here tonight between the Huntsville Hornets and the Randall Lions, winner take all for the number two seed in district play and hosting a, ho a first round playoff game as well. As that'll wrap up the Texas True Comfort Heating and Cooling Countdown to kickoff. Kickoff is coming up next on the Hornet Nation Broadcast Network. This has been the Texas True Comfort Countdown to Kickoff. Stay tuned for this week's Huntsville High School football game. This is the Hornet Nation Broadcast Network, powered by KSAM Sports. License number TACLB42958E. Don't sweat it. Stay cool with Texas True Comfort. Texas True Comfort will fix your broken AC system quickly any day of the week with no overtime fees. They can lower your cooling bills and keep your home cool and comfortable. Call 936-400-0049 to schedule your service today. Discounts for veterans, educators, first responders, and TDCJ personnel. See website for details. Texas True Comfort, veteran owned and operated. Your true comfort is guaranteed. TXTrue.com. This is the Hornet Nation Broadcast Network, 101.7 KSAM Huntsville, and on the KSAM mobile app, Stingham Hornets. We will win! 
It's Friday night in Hornets country. This is Huntsville Hornets High School Football. Proudly presented by Bill Fick Ford and by Advantage Specialties. AB Squared Self Storage. A&D Propane. Adams Furniture. Charlie's Used Car. First Franklin Financial. Gamers Grove. Hartfield Florist. Huntsville Independent School District. Huntsville Truck and Tractor Kubota. MRC Creekside. McGilberry Mechanical Heating and Cooling. Moke and Moke Attorneys at Law. Murray Insurance. Insurance and Financial Services, Nelson Amaya Collision Center, Northside Baptist Church, Pinnacle Realty Advisors, Texas Department of Criminal Justice, Texpress Urgent Care Center, The Woodlands Financial Group, Wiesner Huntsville, McWilliams and Sons Heating, Cooling, and Plumbing, University Heights Baptist Church. The 2023 Hornet season is presented by Bill Fick Ford. Now, here's Carlos Zimmerman and Brian Adams. Live from Southwest Houston here tonight, it is the makings of an all-time classic that we are about to get underway tonight. Live from Richmond, Texas at Trailer Stadium, we welcome you to, to Thursday Night Football on KSAM Sports presented by Bill Fick Ford. Tonight's matchup features the Huntsville Hornets and the Richmond Randall Lions in tonight's regular season finale. A number two seed in the district is on the line. Live from the Pinnacle Realty Advisors broadcast booth, I'm Carlos Zimmerman. Alongside of me is the former Hornet quarterback, Brian Adams. Glad to have you with us tonight. Luke Scott down on the sidelines for us this evening. Boy, is this going to be a heavyweight bout, to say the least, between two teams near the top of District 10 5A Division 2. They are currently tied at 4-1. and one. The winner tonight comes away with the number two seed and hosting that very important home field advantage in the opening round of the playoffs. Looks like Huntsville's going to have the ball to start this one tonight, so the offense will get a look. Brian, as the former quarterback, that should play really good to the advantage with how Huntsville's been playing as of late. Absolutely. I totally agree with that, and I love it. Man, you always win that toss. You want to receive the football. That's always been my thing, but not everybody chooses to receive the ball opening up the game because they like to have it going into the third quarter. However, if you get the ball like Hornets are going to have and they can put points on the board on their opening drive, it puts all the pressure back on Randall. That's what you want to do. If you're tuning in on 101.7 KSAM FM and on the KSAM mobile app, glad to have you with us tonight. Tonight's video broadcast on the KSAM YouTube channel is being presented in 2K Quad HD with a 4K Ultra HD enhanced presentation. Closed captioning is also available for the hearing impaired. For the Randall Lions, they are rocking the all-black jerseys tonight with the numbers in white and the black helmets with the Randall logo adorning each side. For the Huntsville Hornets, they're rocking the all-whites tonight with the numbers in green outlined in black and the rockin' H on the side of that beautiful green helmet. Well, it comes down to this, folks. A winner take all for the number two seed in District 10 5A Division 2 between the Huntsville Hornets and the Randall Lions. We're going to find out here by the end of the night if Randall or Huntsville will host an opening round playoff match coming up next week. Christian Munguia has the ball teed up at his own 40-yard line. Two Hornets are back deep to receive. The Hornets will move right to left. Randall left to right. And the regular season finale is underway tonight in Richmond, Texas at Trailer Stadium. Peyton Pryor will take this kickoff here to the near sideline across to the 10 to the 15, tripped up around the 15, and he's down around the 17-yard line. The Hornets will start there here for first down and 10 coming up here in a moment. And out trots Marcus Lewis, the sophomore quarterback. He will get the nod to start this one tonight. Be paramount for him to remain patient in the pocket and make something happen for the Huntsville Hornets here on this opening drive. Trying to start out hot. That's one of our keys this evening. Huntsville starts out first and 10, moving right to left from the 17-yard line. Lewis out of the shotgun with three receivers, gets the snap. They go to Braylon Phelps right out of the gate to start this one tonight. Randall swarms to them immediately. Forward progress will move him up to just the 17-yard line. It's no gain, second down and 10 for the Hornets. Inside and off to uh, Braylon Phelps. Not a whole lot of running room up the front. <clears throat> Big guys are going to have their hands full tonight with the D-line over on the other side. Four down linemen here for Richmond Randall on second down and 10 as the Hornets now move to the near side hash mark. Lewis working out of the shotgun and three receivers. Here's the snap. Lewis, they go back to the back. Mark Braylon Phelps trying to cut this one here to the near side line. He gets a little bit more than he did the first time. It'll bring you a gain of two, and that'll set up third down and eight quickly for the Huntsville Hornets. Yeah, but just another little straight handoff over the left side. Not a whole lot of running room. Picked up a couple yards on that carry. He's third and eight. Hornets have their work cut out for them. you got to convert third downs. This was the first one. 
It's a big one. Three receivers here for the Huntsville Hornets. Hunter Lorenz spread out to the far sideline, one-on-one at the top. Out of the shotgun, Lewis on third and eight gets the snap. He'll roll quickly here to his right, trying to gain the edge, throws off his back leg. Coming back to it is Lorenz, but it is just out of his reach, incomplete. Fourth down, and the Hornets are held three and out. Yeah, Hunter Lorenz, he's running kind of a eight to 10 yard out route as Marcus Lewis is rolling to his right. And it looked like it was a pretty good ball there. I'm not sure uh, what happened. It was on the far sidelines over on the Hornet uh, bench. Nonetheless, though, Richmond Randall is about to go on offense. 10.45 remaining in the Advantage Specialties first quarter. Joseph Mejia on for this punt. Two res returners back here for Richmond Randall. Shiloh Jones gets the snap away. A low one to Mejia gets this one off. Kind of gets caught up in the wind. So this is unfortunately, well, it takes a Hornet roll into Randall territory. It'll be touched down. <laughs> Shiloh Jones trying to move that ball <laughs> with a little bit of the wind he can provide. It's down to the 45-yard line. So a short field for Randall. And here comes their transfer cornerback. Tyler Skrabonik will be the one under center tonight for Richmond Randall here to start first down and 10. He'll be in the backfield alone. They are going to go spread offense right out of the gate. Trips receivers to the far sideline, two down here to the near side with 10.33 left in the first. Skrabonik awaiting the snap here. Four-man rush on the way for the Hornets. First down and 10 from the 45. They'll motion the back here and William Callis to the backfield. He gets the snap to Skrabonik. He'll hand it off to Landon William Callis, running this one to the far sideline, but he's met instantly by a white jersey. Ford Progress will take William Callis to the 46-yard line again, a one for second and nine. It looks like Zach Moss was the one that met him first. Really nice job by the Hornet defense right there on Randall's opening play. Swarm defense by the Hornets. Only gave up a couple of yards on that carry. Two receivers stacked on top of each other to the both sidelines. Skorbonic out of the shotgun, second and nine. They hand it off again to William Callis, trying to cut this one upfield. He's shy of midfield to the 49-yard line. And now Randall quickly brings up to a third down and six as they need one yard to get in the Huntsville territory. It's another big third down coming up uh, on the defensive side of the ball for the Hornets. Big stop needed right here by the green and white. Trips receivers here to the near sideline on a spread offense here for Skrabonic. He tries to get the Hornets to jump. They don't, so they'll adjust here at the line of scrimmage. Third down and six from the Randall 49-yard line. 9.35 left in the first, no score. Hornets will rush with four. Skrabonic will drop back with some time. Fires up over the middle. It's caught at the 45-yard line. A good open field tackle there by Isaiah Collins, but it's enough for a first down. They just needed six. They got seven. Making the catch that time was Courtney Brown for Randall. First down and ten. Nice pass there by Tyler Skrabonic. I mean, he stood tall in the pocket, hit his drop step, drilled his receiver right in his hands, converted third down. Nice play. Up to the Hornet, 48-and-a-half yard line. First down and 10 for the Randall Lions. Of an H-back offset here and three receivers on this first down. Four-man rush for the Hornets. Squirbonic looking to the sideline here. They'll change up a couple of things. Send one man in motion. That's Cedric McClintock as they will throw here to the near sideline. Caught around the 42-yard line. That is Jackson Montalongo to the 41-yard line. It's only a modest gain of two, and that will set up second down and eight. Yep, Skrabonic just throwing the ball over here to the short side of the field near Richmond Randall's sidelines. Not a whole lot there. Nicely done there by the secondary for the Hornets. If you're tuning in on the video broadcast, we would love to hear from you. Let us know where you're watching this ball game from down in the comments below. We'll have a lot of comments getting already underway here tonight as we're still early. No score, 8.54 left in the first as McClintock in motion to the left side of the line. Skorbonic gets the snap, handed off once again to William Callis with some space across the 35. J-Bug is able to get to him at the 33. We'll see where they spot it. Either way, it's enough for another first down for Richmond Randall to the 32. Nice play there by Richmond Randall. Another run over on the right side. That's two first downs they've picked up on this drive so far. Randall is moving the ball. And this transfer quarterback, Tyler Skrabonic, facilitating this offense well early on for Randall. First and 10 from the 32, working out of the shotgun with three receivers. One lined up in the slot. Here comes the blitz for the Hornets. William Callis with space across the 30, breaks off one tackle, stiffs off another, but Cole Schroeder is able to finish him off at the 28-yard line. Is a gain of four on the play. Bring up second down and six. You know, Brian, Randall's doing a good job here. They're moving the ball methodically and being able to pick up first downs on those critical third downs, which is always key for an offense as they'll quickly go hurry up here. Kadarian easily gets off the field here as the Hornets show blitz on second down. They go back to William Callis with space across the 25 to the 20, cuts it back to the 15, down to the 10, down to the 5, and that is a touchdown saving tackle by Cole Schroeder, but another great run by Landon Williams, William Callis, 
all the way down inside the Hornet five. The running game for Randall is working really well here on their opening drive. I mean, they are close to knocking it, knocking down the door here. First and goal from the two, Scorbana gets the snap, go back to William Callis, and he stretches the arms to the end zone. Touchdown, Richmond Randall with 7.44 left to go in the advantage specialties. First quarter, a methodical drive for the Lions, and they're able to cash in for six. Nice drive by Randall. I mean, you got to give them credit. They started on about their 45-yard line, and just methodically, as you said, Carlos, moved the ball downfield, a couple of nice little passes in there, but, man, their running game is on on point right now. Christian Mongoya on for the point after try. 6-0 Randall. Pending this PAT, the wind is at his back ever so slightly, about 5 to 8 miles an hour. A high snap. The kick is up by Mongoya, and it is good through the uprights with 7.44 left to go in the first. 7-0 Randall. Huntsville will look to answer when we return in 30 seconds here on the Hornet Nation. Your brand is your business. Shop local with Advantage Specialties where you will get service with a personal touch. Hello, I'm Stephanie Pitts, owner and operator of Advantage Specialties. Advantage Specialties offers screen printing and embroidery on site. Let Advantage Specialties get you ready for your next event with cups, apparel, caps, pins, and everything else you could need. Go to AdvantageSpecialties.com or call our team at 936-291-3222 to start that order now. Sing them Hornets! Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, on the Hornet Nation Broadcast Network, powered by KSAM Sports. 7.44 left to go in this first quarter. It is 7 to nothing. Richmond Randall here in this critical game for the Huntsville Hornets, really for both teams, as both teams fighting to be able to host an opening round playoff game at their respective home stadiums. We're in Randall's house tonight in Richmond at Trailer Stadium. I'm Carlos Zimmerman. Alongside of me is Brian Adams, the former Hornet quarterback, live from the Pinnacle Realty Advisors broadcast booth. A good methodical drive that went 55 yards for the Randall Lions and cashing in for the touchdown for Landon William Callis from two yards out to make this a 7-0 ball game. Kick away here by Christian Monguia. Two back deep to receive for the Hornets, and they will take this one out of the end zone with Braylon Phelps working this one to the near sideline. That's actually J-Bug across the 25 before he is pushed down around the 28-yard line, but a great spot for the Huntsville Hornets to set up on offense. Brian, while well, we have the opportunity, let's thank some of our wonderful sponsors. Absolutely. This season of Huntsville Hornet football is presented by Bill Fick Ford. No bull, just good deals. And AB Squared Self Storage, your local go to self storage facility. First down and 10 for the Hornets up to the 28 yard line. Much better field position here. Marcus Lewis works out of the shotgun with three receivers. Four-man rush for Randall as Lewis gets the snap on first down, rolling left. Looking downfield, fires this one up over the top and almost had Melton Green on a back shoulder catch. Just a little bit too much sauce on that one. Would have been great around the 50-yard line. Like the option here to go fast out of the gate on first down. Yeah, I like that play call. It was a nice pass there by Marcus Lewis. He is a right-hander rolling out to his left. So that is very difficult, but he was able to split the defenders, and man, the ball hit the wide receiver on a deep out route. Man, that should have been caught. Second and 10 from the 28. Hornets now lined up on the far hash mark. Out of the shotgun is Lewis for trips receivers. He gets the snap. He'll hand it off here to Braylon Phelps, trying to cut this one to the near sideline, but Randall meets him instantly right at the line of scrimmage at the 28-yard line, and quickly back into a third down and long situation are the Hornets. It's a big third down here. I mean, the Hornets are putting the pressure on themselves because they're really they're not moving the ball very well to start this ball game out. And these third and longs are going to take their toll on the Hornets. They'll spread them out here. Two receivers to the near sideline. Savion Conte and Milton Green the third. Pryor will go in motion from the far sideline. Work to the left side here as Lewis gets the snap. Rolling left. Looking downfield. Has a man down there in Savion Conte, but he just overloaded that one to the 35-yard line. Well out of the reach of Conte. And the Hornets are going to go three and out once again. Well, by taking the ball in the first half, the Hornets have not really taken advantage of uh, getting first shot at it. And that is the second series they've uh, been forced to punt. Man, they've got to find some offense. they got to find it quick. Mejia on to punt for the second time tonight. Two back deep to receive Courtney Brown as well as Sean Smith. Mejia. Gets the snap away from Shiloh Jones, puts a line drive one into this one, kind of tumbling end over end of the 31-yard line as the Hornets will make a stop on the back at the 40-yard line. Returning that one was Courtney Brown, but we do have a flag that is thrown for the first time tonight. That flag brought to you by A&D Propane. Not certain what this could be about. 
Well, it came from the back, Judge, and typically that's uh, a block in the back, well, but we're not sure. Well, we got two flags here on the field, Brian. We have one towards the Huntsville sideline as well on the far side around the 39. Yeah, we do. So this could be offsetting penalties, but judging by that look, and it would just set up at the 41 regardless for Richmond Randall. When you get the call here from the White Hat, and we'll see what the sign is. They are both on Randall. So that'll back Randall up to the 31. No, past the 30 to the 28-yard line because that is where the spot of the foul happened at the 38. So Randall will be backed up here on their second drive of the night, so it'll be up to the Hornet defense to make a big stop. With 6.44 left to go in the first, 7-0 Randall, first and 10 for Tyler Skorbonik and his cast of characters on the offense. From the 28-yard line, he'll motion here in Sean Smith to the backfield for this first down play. Skorbonik gets the snap. They hand it off to Smith, working this one to the middle of the field, cutting it back around the 30, but the Hornets are able to swarm to him around the 33-yard line where they stop forward progress. Again, a five and a second and five coming up. Straight handoff up the middle, running back uh, Sean Smith. I mean, just a uh, nice little run there on their opening uh, play of their second drive. You have a good mix of backs here, does Richmond Randall. You got William Callis, who was on the first drive. Now you're seeing Sean Smith, some different looks for the Hornet defense. Second and five from the 33. Skorbonik in the shotgun has the snap. Play action fake throws, and it's batted at the line of scrimmage by the Huntsville Hornets. Good stuff there from the front four of Huntsville. Maybe Tyler Smith or Zach Moss that got his hand on that one. Third down and five for Randall. Yeah, I believe that was Zach Moss got his hand up there. Defensive end for the Hornets. I mean, great reaction by the, uh, the uh, young defensive end for the Hornets there on that play. Now here, if you're Randall, you can open up the playbook a little bit here for this third down and five. Line to gain is the 38. They do spread them out five wide. Three to the far sideline as Corbana gets the snap. Now looking to the left side. That is caught at the 30-yard line. The Hornet defense is able to swarm to the receiver in Courtney Brown. Making the big stop coming back to them was Tyler Smith. Fourth down, and Randall will punt for the first time tonight. Well, this is going to give Cole Schroeder an opportunity to return another punt. And, folks, he is very exciting to watch. I mean, he's had two go all the way this year only to come back by penalty so this guy can run and man he is overdue 535 left to go in the advantage specialties first quarter Christian Mongolia on to punt this one away Cole Schroeder back deep to receive for the Hornets Hornets have also blocked some punts this year but Randall is waiting for it as Mongolia he'll punt this one here to the near sideline not allowing Schroeder an opportunity to return but my goodness did that take a good roll for Randall ball is down at the 22 yard line by sincere Timpson and that will send the Hornet offense back out there for their third drive of the night. Well, it's important right here that the Hornets and Marcus Lewis, man, they've got to get some first downs and move the ball, get some momentum switched over to their side. Great opportunity. The defense stood tall right there, got the ball back in the Hornets' hands. Now you got to do something with it. Hornet offense has been held three and out on their two drives so far this evening. We'll see if third time's the charm. First down and 10 for the Hornets from the 22, moving right to left across your radio dial. Lewis in the shotgun, gets the snap. Quick handoff here, Braylon Phelps trying to cut this one up the middle, bouncing off some would-be tacklers. Forward progress gives him the 24-yard line. A modest gain of two for the young junior, and that'll bring up second down and eight. Braylon Phelps, what a fun runner. I mean, he's the power runner in the two between him and Treshawn Brown. I mean, he loves to run north and south. Get that momentum behind him, and, man, he will run you over. Very talented running back. Looks like they're going to set up trips receivers here to the near sideline. Hunter Lorenz will line up in the slot. Had him on the coach's show Monday night. Was the MVP for the Hornets against Brenham. Second down and eight from the 24. Lewis out of the gun, gets the snap. He'll roll to his left once again, trying to throw here over the cop. It's behind Hunter Lorenz, just a little bit behind him. That'll bring up a third down and eight, but Lorenz knows if it hits your hands, you should bring it in, but that's a tough haul. That was a tough haul. Hunter Lorenz coming all the way across the field on a drag pattern, and the ball was a little bit high. But, man, he got both hands on it. Those are ones you got to bring in. And 7 nothing, Randall with the lead. Four and a half to play in the advantage specialties. First quarter here at Trailer Stadium in Richmond, if you're just joining us. Carlos Zimmerman and Brian Adams live from the Pinnacle Realty Advisors broadcast booth. It is third down and eight for the Hornets. 0 for 2 on third downs tonight. 
Three receivers for Lewis out of the shotgun. He'll drop back, looking to throw. Here comes the blitz. He sidesteps one. That's a great block by Braylon Phelps, but the defense is able to catch up to Marcus Lewis as he tried to make the play with his legs. No gain, fourth down, and Huntsville has held three and out for the third time tonight. Wow. Give credit to uh, Randall. I mean, they're playing really good defense, and uh, again, the Hornets uh, offensively are struggling, and they're going to have to figure it out. Man, this is too good a team to keep going three and out. But I do want to highlight Braylon Phelps. He gave his quarterback an opportunity on that third down with a great block, picking up the blitz, but unfortunately for the Hornets, they have to punt again with Joseph Mejia. Mejia gets the snap from Shiloh Jones, takes his time, puts his good leg into this one. Down the field, it will roll laterally here and die around the 45-yard line. That is where it is downed by the Hornets and Isaiah Collins. So Randall right back where they were on their opening drive of the night at the 45. The Hornet defense, the longer they're out there, they're going to have that tiring start to happen, and it's all happening in this first quarter of play. So the offense will have some things to work on here as they are over to the bench right now talking with the offensive staff. Let's see what the defense can do. First down and 10 for Randall. 3.43 remaining in the first. They lead 7 to nothing to the Lions. One back here with Scribonic. Foreman down for Huntsville on the defensive line. McClintock goes in motion. They'll throw here to the far sideline. Spinning around would-be tacklers is Courtney Brown, and he has got all those fancy moves, and that is allowing him to get down to the 49-yard line again. A four on the plate for Brown, second down and six next. Man, that was a nice catch here by Courtney Brown, and he does have some moves. I mean, right after he catches the ball, makes a great move to avoid a tackler just to be uh, swarmed by a couple more. But, man, talented little receiver there for Randall. Second down and six. Four-man rush for the Hornets. Tight end offset as Scorbonic gets the snap. They'll hand it back here to William Callis, but the Hornets storm defense able to swarm to him. Three Hornets in on the stop of William Callis. That'll set up a third down and five for Randall once again. More folks tuning in on the KSAM YouTube channel. Claudia Tucker cheering on the Hornets tonight. Keenan Watson is watching as well. Chad Webb, longtime watcher of ours, and we do have a Hornet. That is slow to get up on the field. We can't quite see who that is down there. But while they tend to him, we will step aside and take a break for 30 seconds on the Hornet Nation Broadcast Network. Exceeding all expectations for three generations, you can call us day or night. McWilliams Heating, Cooling, and Plumbing provides service you can salute from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. seven days a week with no overtime fees. Check our current air conditioning and plumbing service offers and schedule online today at callmcwilliams.com. Lots of TLCLA 2150. All of East Texas knows when your AC goes, we got the best service round by far. We're not comfortable. I'll tell you why. What's up, y'all? I'm varsity running back Trayshawn Brown, and you're listening to Huntsville Hornet football on 101.7 K Sound. Sting them, Hornets. 258 remaining in the Advantage Specialties first quarter. A play 7-0 Randall on the Hornet Nation broadcast network. The player that was down for Huntsville was Hezekiah Johnson. Good thing to see here, though. He is being helped off to the sideline, mostly under his own power. That is good to see. We've had him on the ho coach's show this season. Great kid, and he's been phenomenal on that defensive line for the Hornets. But he comes off for the time being, so that'll give another player off the bench and Fred Oladelli an opportunity. He will line up on the far side of the field as one of those four down linemen for Huntsville on this third down and five right at midfield for the Randall Lions. The Hornets trying to keep Randall three and out once again. They spread him with four receivers, two to each sideline. Scorbonic will send one of them in motion. Cedric McClintock, he'll line up in the slot on the near side. Scorbonic looking to his right here, trying to get downfield. Feels the pressure, throws off his back leg. Caught at the 45-yard line. That's a first down for Richmond Randall. Man, what a throw to Jackson Montalongo all the way down inside the Huntsville 40. As, my goodness, Scorbonic had to reach back across his body to make that play. Great play there by Skrbonik. He's rolling to his right, trying to let the play develop. Sees his wide out, wide open in the middle, drops it over, good catch. All the way down to the 36 yard line, a gain of 14 for Randall. First and 10 from the 36, they hand it back to William Callis, slipping across defenders, but only up to the 35 yard line. It's a gain of one on the play. I want to bring in the third member of our crew, Luke Scott, down on the sidelines for us tonight. Uh, Luke, as this play gets ready to get underway here, the offense has had its struggles to start tonight, but the defense is still holding its own. Yeah, I got to credit Marcus Lewis here a little bit there. He's th throwing some good balls, just three first down uh, catches and spent three drops. So got to find a way to catch the ball here. Second down and nine coming up for the Randall Lions. Skorbonic in this transfer quarterback for Richmond Randall, facilitating the offense here. Leo Garza was the starter a year ago. He's still with this team. 
As Scribana gets the snap, they hand it back to Sean Smith, has some space across the 35, down to the 29-yard line of the Huntsville Hornets. That is a big gain of seven on the play, but it does set up another third down and short for the Randall Lions. Man, this is really a big play for the Hornet defense. If they can get a stop right here, I think the Hornet offense will come out and have a little bit of momentum in their back and start moving the ball a little bit. they got to get a stop right here. Third down and three from the 29-yard line. Tight end in motion here. Skorbonic with three receivers. Four-man rush for the Hornets. They bring the blitz with Shiloh Jones. Smith working this one to the far side line. Smith stretching, but he is going to be just shy of the first down at around the 27-yard line. That'll bring up a fourth down and one. And here comes the special teams unit for Randall. They will be content to just come away with the three. So a great job by the Hornet defense. This is going to be still a very tough field goal for Christian Monguia. And I say that because the wind has just picked up. It's at his back, but it also is blowing left to right. It is from the left hash to the, near, to the far sideline. Again, from the 27. Ball's going to be marked at the 34. This will be officially a 44-yard try for Christian Munguia to make it 10 to nothing with 37 seconds and counting left in the first quarter. The kick away here by Munguia has the distance, but he pushed it wide to the right. So the Hornet defense makes another big stop. With 28 seconds remaining in the advantage special these first quarter, the offense will get the ball back down 7 to nothing. This is their opportunity right here. I mean, that stops the momentum. For Randall, now the offense for the Hornets, they've got to move the football. They've got to get some first downs, and they've got to put points on the board. So the Hornets will line up on first down and 10 from the 27-yard line. Big opportunity here for Huntsville. Try and tie this game up. Marcus Lewis will line up in the shotgun. Trips receivers here to the near sideline. Lewis claps on first down, looking to pass. Throws over the middle, and it's batted down, trying to get it into Peyton Pryor. That was a tough window to get it into. Back in coverage was Jared Sherman, the linebacker for Randall. Falls to the turf incomplete, second down. Great play there by Sherman. I mean, that ball hit him right in his chest and kind of caught him off guard, or he'd have intercepted that football. Man, that was, uh, that was a scary pass there. 25 seconds left here in the first quarter. 7-0 Randall. Same formation for the Hornets. Lewis awaits the snap. He's got it. They'll hand it off here. This is Peyton Pryor cutting this one back, taking some defenders with him across the 30 to the 32-yard line. That is a gain of five on the play. Actually, that was Braylon Phelps taking that one ahead. But that, either way, sets up a third down and very manageable five for Huntsville. Inside handoff to Braylon Phelps. Nice, tough running after initial contact. I mean, makes this third down a little bit more manageable. They've got to convert it right here. But the Hornets will be content to let this one go to the end of the first quarter of play. Brought to you by Advantage Specialties. It is 7-0 as we transition to the Radio Mash second quarter of play. Huntsville has the ball on third down and five when we come back on the Hornet Nation Broadcast Network. Hey, y'all. Josh Ward here for Bill Fick Ford in Huntsville. Good country music and Ford trucks just go hand in hand. And for the best customer service, the place to go is Bill Fick Ford. Not only do they offer a great selection of inventory, it's a great place to do business. And at Bill Fick Ford, our first responders, our veterans, and active military always receive an appreciation bonus. Stop in today for the best deals on the new Ford F-150 or build your own while the order bank is open. Shop online at BillFickFordHuntsville.com. Yeah, boy. Switching is easy. We do it all the time. We switch on the lights. We switch TV channels. You can switch and save with State Farm. In fact, State Farm agent Diana K. Barnes, right here in Huntsville, can switch you over so you can start saving today. Diana and her team are ready to welcome you to the State Farm neighborhood. Just give her a call when you want the real deal. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. KSAM Hornet football continues. Getting ready to start this at Radio Mash. Second quarter of play quickly as Lewis gets the snap on third down and five. Throws this one up over the top, but well out of the reach of receiver. But he is going to get a flag drawn right there. Wow, do the Hornets going to catch a break here. Peyton Pryor was the intended receiver. That ball was a little overthrown by Marcus Lewis, but it was enough to draw a flag. The big question here is, is it catchable? Well, they don't care. It's a pass interference penalty on Richmond Randall. 15-yard penalty and a fresh set of downs. The first first down brought to you by Mocha Mocha Attorneys at Law for the Huntsville Hornets tonight. Well, that's one way to get it. You know, you don't want to get it by penalty, but uh, you know what? They got it, and that's a good thing, and hopefully this is something, uh, some good things are coming. In the second quarter, brought to you by Radio Mash, the 17th annual Radio Mash. 
7-0 Randall. First down and 10 for the Hornets to the 43-yard line. Best field position they've had tonight. Lewis gets the direct snap. Design run for him. Trying to cut across near midfield. Actually, they marked it at the 48-yard line. I'm, my numbers are a little bit off tonight. But it's a gain of two on the quarterback keeper for Marcus Lewis to midfield. Lewis just taking the ball around the left side. Trying to cut up between the guard and tackle gap. Not a whole lot of running room. Picks up a couple yards on the carry. Right at midfield. Hornets trying to crack into Randall territory for the first time tonight. Lewis on second down and eight out of the shotgun. Three receivers to the near side. He gets the snap now rolling right here in his favor. Feels the pressure. Throws just a little bit too high for Peyton Pryor. Had him open in the flat just a little bit high, and that'll bring up third down. You know, those, uh, those balls by Marcus are really coming out of his hands hot, and they're just sailing on him a little bit. It seems like uh, the last four or five passes – have uh, had so much heat on them that when they get to the receivers, it's just a little high and out of their reach. If he, if he pulls the strength back just a touch, they're right on the money. All so the money. he is right on the cusp of it if he can pull it back just a little bit. Third down and eight from midfield. Hornets moving left to right across your radio dial. They'll go spread offense here. Three down linemen only for Richmond Randall, but they show blitz on the far sideline. Now to the near sideline. Lewis staying in the pocket, flushed out here, and he's going to be sacked back at the 41-yard line. A pair of Randall Lions in on the stop coming off the top of the pile. Curtis John Miller, fourth down, and unfortunately Huntsville will have the punt again. More folks tuning in on the KCM YouTube channel. David Angstad, a good friend of ours. Julian Casanova, the former Huntsville Hornet defensive lineman. Tuning in as well, Martha Tubbs Walker, Rosalie Bajinski, and Quentin Houston. More people tuning in tonight. Keep those comments flowing in. We'd love to hear from you. It's fourth down and 16 for the Hornets after the sack. The Hornets will now have their wind at the back here for Joseph Mejia. He gets the low snap. He gets this one off. Wow, did he put a leg into that one? Come on, stay in the field of play. Stay, stop. Nope, it's into the end zone for a touchback. A great Leg there for Joseph Mejia, but it did not take the bounce he wanted, so Randall will take it out to the 20-yard line to set up their next drive. Brian, let's thank more of our wonderful sponsors who made tonight's broadcast possible. I absolutely want to thank Charlie's Used Cars. Customer satisfaction is our number one priority in Huntsville Independent School District. Focus for our children's unlimited success in Hartfield Floors. Personalizing your events since 1957. Randall on for their first drive of the second quarter. 10.32 remaining in the Radio Mash second quarter. 7-0 Lions with the lead. Empty backfield here for Tyler Skorbronik. He'll get the snap throw quickly here to the near side line, making the catch and stepping out of bounds around the 23-yard line. That is D'Amico Harvey, his first target of the night. It's a gain of about three. Make it four on the play to the 24, second down and six. Skorbonik, again, this new quarterback for Richmond Randall has provided a jolt to the Lions this season. He'll line up here on second down and six with four receivers. He gets the snap, play action fake, throws here to the near side once again, trying to chug the legs forward. Shy of the first down is Jackson Montalongo, and they give him forward progress to the 27-yard line. They need the 30. It'll bring up third down and three for Randall moving right to left. Uh, another big third down here for the Hornet defense. They've been doing pretty good out there tonight. They've been on the field an awful lot, but, uh, man, this is an important third down for them here. Empty backfield here for Tyler Skorbonik. Four-man rush for the Hornets. Five receivers here. Skorbonik got the Hornets to jump, but not at Oh, it did, does draw a flag. The ball is thrown way downfield, and it is intercepted by the Hornets in Brent Carroll. It was a free play for Randall, so this one might be coming back. Carroll returning this interception to the 25, but we do have a flag here on the near sideline. I think they're going to catch Kadarian easily in the neutral zone here, and this one is going to stay with the Randall Lions, unfortunately. Yeah, double nickel. I mean, he's right there above the ball, but, you know, you got to watch. Uh, oh, well, hold on here, Brian. Now the offense is trotting out here for Huntsville. I'm intrigued to who this is on. It's offsides on the defense, so... That is enough for a first down for Richmond Randall, so now they got to get the defense back in there. For this now first down and 10 after the five-yard penalty, charge to the Hornets. You know, you, that, that is a difficult call right there. Skrabonik, I, I mean, he's very talented, but you got to watch his head, man. He is moving that head as he snaps the ball. 
And we have more whistles here coming out of this first and 10 from the 32. They blow it dead as the Hornet defense was trying to reset on the field. Remember, the Hornet offense came out there, but now the defense has an opportunity to reset here. But it is a fresh set of downs for Richmond Randall. Scrabonic out of the shotgun, trips receivers to the far sideline. He gets the snap on first and 10, hands it off to William Callis, cutting it across 35 to the 40, cutting it back around the 42-yard line. J-Bug trying to get him down to the ground. It's about five or six Hornets trying to get him down, and it's enough for another first down for Randall up to the 45, a gain of 13. Nice run up the middle. I mean, they're running up and down the field tonight. Their running game is uh, working quite well for Randall here in this uh, first half. 9.21 remaining in this Radio Mash second quarter. We have a timeout on the field. I believe that is taken by the Huntsville Hornets. We'll take it with them on the University Heights Baptist Church timeout on the Hornet Nation Broadcast Network. This is BJ McMichael, and I am a proud 1993 Hornet graduate and 1998 Bearcat graduate. I am also the Minister of Students and Outreach at University Heights Baptist Church. Here at University Heights, we are connected to Christ and the community. We also offer small groups and activities for every age and stage. Be sure to check us out online at uhbc.net or download our UHBC app in the Apple or Android store today. Sting them, Hornets! Kyle's McCord, Norman, varsity linebacker, and you're listening to 101.7 KSM, Sting of Hornets. Back here in Richmond, Texas at Trailer Stadium, 7-0 Randall over Huntsville on the Hornet Nation Broadcast Network coming out of that University Heights Baptist Church timeout. Hornets will have two remaining here in this first half of play. First down and 10 for Randall from the 45. Trips receivers to the far sideline. They'll hand it off to Landon William Callis, trying to cut this one to that far sideline. Cuts it back at the 50-yard line, bouncing off the arm tackles of the Hornets. And the Hornet tackle is going to push him around that line to gain. They mark him shy at the Hornet 46-yard line. That'll bring up a second down and very short one for Randall. And they will move into the hurry-up offense here as the Hornet defense starting to so, show some signs of fatigue here in the second quarter. Second and one, back to William Callis. Gets it across the 40, to the 35, to the 30. Good spin move at the 25 and all the way down near the red zone to the 20-yard line. Another incredible run for Landon William Callis. And that's a big first down for Richmond Randall again. 20 plus. Straight handoff up the middle. Callis, man, he got some great moves. Big run there for that young man. And that hurry up offense is going to really keep Randall's foot on the gas pedal here. It is first down and 10 from the 21 just outside the red zone. Randall moving right to left. Scorbana gets the snap. We'll go back to the back here in William. Callis, nope, not this time. They will go to a different back here. Still chugging the legs down to the 11-yard line. This time taking it. First touch of the night on the running back side for Sincere Timpson. He takes it all the way down to the Hornet 12. It is a gain of nine on the play, and that'll set up second down and one for Randall. Nice run in there by Randall again. Hurry up offense. They are not wasting any time at all. Second down and one. They hand it back here to Timpson. Cuts it upfield around the 10-yard line. They will give him a half yard on the play. It is not enough for a first down for Randall. It is third in inches from that 11-yard line for the Lions with eight minutes left to go in the Radio Mash second quarter. And Randall moving the ball here with some urgency down the field, already having a 7-0 lead on the Hornets. It's third down and one from the 11. Four-man rush for Huntsville. Skorbonica has given them the, de the deathly dosage of the run on this drive. Not much passing from Skorbonic. As William Callis is back in as the running back. Hornets show blitz as Skorbonic gets the snap play action fake. They throw here, and it's off the fingertips of his intended receiver there to the far sideline. I'm stunned they throw the ball here. Looking to go to Jaden Osborne for the first time tonight. It is fourth down and inches to go for Randall, and obviously in this situation, they're going to go for it. Absolutely, they're going to go for it. they got all the confidence in the world behind their back right now. They are moving the football, and the Hornets are not. So, yeah, I'd go for it as well. They're going to bring it into the Wildcat formation here. Here's Courtney Brown. He'll line up as the quarterback with two running backs. The Hornets will rush with four on fourth down and one. Both backs will now motion out of the backfield to leave Brown alone in the backfield. Brown gets the snap. He'll take it himself here to the sideline, cuts it up through the gap to the five to the end zone. Touchdown, Richmond Randall. Courtney Brown takes it in from 11 yards out and makes this a two-possession game pending the PAT here. Nice run there by uh, Brown. I mean, he takes it himself over the right side, goes in basically untouched. 
and they're off to a big start here against the Hornets tonight. Christian Munguia on for the point after try. Wind in his face ever so slightly with 7.07 left to go in the Radio Mash second quarter. His holder here is Jackson Montalongo. Snap is down the hold by Montalongo down and the kick by Mongoya splits the uprights and it is good. 14 to nothing with 7.07 remaining in the second quarter. We're going to keep it right here though for the time being. I'll bring in the third member of our crew, Luke Scott, down on the sidelines for us. Well, Luke, Randall has thrown another punch here at the Hornets. Now it's you're kind of in not so much desperation mode, but you got to bring some more urgency now if you're the offense. Urgency and got to find a way to move the ball down the field. You know, only one first down tonight, you know, based off of it penalty so you know we're going to find a way to move the down the field and you like to stick with the run game but the run game hasn't really worked uh, so you got the default to the pass here which means you got to catch the passes tonight uh, I have faith in this team they'll figure it out they'll find a way to do it the uh, you know the Hornet is a savvy little insect so they'll find a way to do it we just got to find a way to generate just a little momentum to get going here on offense Thank you, Luke. Down on the sidelines for us there on that far side. Huntsville brought a good delegation tonight, an hour and 45 minutes away from the gateway to the East Texas Piney Woods. But their Hornets are down 14 to nothing with 7.07 left to go in the Radio Mash second quarter of play. Christian Mongoya has got the ball teed up at his own 40. Two Hornets are back deep to receive. Peyton Pryor, and I believe that's also J-Bug, back deep to take this return. Got to find a way to generate some momentum here if you're the Huntsville Hornets. Kick away here by Mongoya. It's a booming kick that's kind of dying around the seven yard line. It'll be an opportunity for J-Bug to return here to the near sideline, 20, 25, and the tackle will take him up to the 29. Kind of got tripped up by his own player there around the 28 yard line, but J-Bug sets the Hornets up in a good spot, and that is where the Huntsville offense will retake the field. Yeah, the Hornets offensively, they, they really need to have a sustained drive. They need to, to eat some clock and give the defense some time to rest, and they got to convert first downs you know converting only one first down due to a penalty is not very good 701 remaining in the second quarter Marcus Lewis lines up in the shotgun with two receivers Hornets will bring it in tight here on that left side of the offensive line signaling a run that direction they'll hand it off here to the back Braylon Phelps tries to get some forward momentum and he's not going to get anything there swallowing him up first was the defensive lineman Michael Blake and that'll bring up second and 10 from the 29. Inside handoff to Braylon Phelps and there's just not a whole lot of running room. Randall's defense man they are playing pretty uh pretty good so far here in this opening half. We'll set up in the same form formation here Will Huntsville down 14 to nothing six and a half to play in the second. Four down linemen on the way here for Richmond Randall, maybe showing blitz from the linebacker core. Lewis out of the gun, claps, gets the snap, looking to pass, throws over the middle, and it's incomplete. Trying to get it into the hands of the tight end, Jerry a Singletary. Would have been enough for a first down, but it's in and out of his hands, maybe a little hot too, and that sets up another third down and 10 for the Hornets. Well, I'm not so sure Jared Sherman, number five for Randall, got a hand on that. I mean, there was a lot of people right in that mix, and I think he got a hand around to maybe bat that ball down. But again, uh, third and long, and that's kind of been the theme so far in this first half. Third and 10 for Huntsville from the 29. Phelps a motion out of the backfield, leaving Lewis alone. Form a three receiver package. Lewis gets the snap, four man rush for Randall. He'll throw this one to the far sideline, trying to get it into the hands of his intended target, I believe, waiting for that number to turn around here. That was Melton Green the third, one of the hot receivers for the Hornets so far this year. But again, the Hornets are held three and out on this drive, and they have to punt it back to Randall. Wow. Absolutely zero offense by the Hornets. Clock stop at 6.13 left to go in the Radio Mash second quarter. Two back to receive here for the Randall line. So the defense is going to be called upon once again here, and you know with just how this ball game kind of goes, it, they start to tire as it progresses. A high snap by Jones, but Mejia able to corral it, puts a leg into this one with the wind helping him. Fair catch at the 37-yard line by Courtney Brown. And here comes Tyler Skorbonik and company out once again for another drive. Brian, let's thank more of our wonderful sponsors who made tonight's broadcast possible. We want to thank McWilliams and Sons, heating, cooling, and plumbing. We're not comfortable until you are. And MRC, Creekside Retirement Community, a healthy living senior community. And Mocha Mocha Attorneys at Law, for your estate planning, real estate, or business law needs, call Mocha Mocha Attorneys at Law, serving Huntsville since 1971. First and 10 for Randall. They move right to left from the 38-yard line, leading 14 to nothing with 6.07 left in the second. 
It's Tavis Gorbonik. He'll line up alone in the backfield. Trips receivers to the far sideline. Two down here to the near side. Gorbonik had it changed up at the line of scrimmage here. He'll send one in motion. That's the running back, William Callis. He'll line up to form the shotgun formation. On the right side of Skorbonik, they'll hand it off to William Callis, trying to cut it upfield across the 35 to the 40, 45, 50, 45, 40. And from the first play on the drive, William Callis will take it to the house. A 62-yard house call for Richmond Randall, and they continue to pour it on here against Huntsville in the second. Wow, what a run, man. Just wide open up the middle, never touched. Takes it all the way to the house. It is, uh, wow. Got to give Randall credit, man. Made, made a couple of good cuts on that touchdown there to take that one all the way. And with 5.55 left to go in the second here in this critical game with a lot of playoff implications riding on it. Huntsville finds themselves in a hole here in the second quarter. Christian Mongoya on for the point after try. Snap away here, hold down by Montalongo, and the Hornets not able to block it as Mongolia splits the uprights, makes this a 21-0 ball game with 5.55 left in the Radio Mash second quarter. We'll step aside and take a break for 30 seconds here on the Hornet Nation Broadcast Network. I'm Jerry Larson at Reliable Auto Parts, your auto parts plus store in Huntsville, Texas, having great products, excellent quality, and outstanding prices. This is what you can expect from Reliable Parts where you can purchase all your car care products, maintenance supplies, and auto parts. Our services and in-house store offerings are designed to keep your vehicle and motorized machine in proper working condition. Reliable parts, your auto parts store, 1011 11th Street, Huntsville, 295-5747. Hornet Pride lives on Kaser. 21-0 Randall with 5.55 left to go in this Radio Mash second quarter. Carlos Zimmerman and Brian Adams live from the Pinnacle Realty Advisors broadcast booth. Huntsville in a hole right now, down three scores to Randall in a battle for the number two seed, a potential to host a playoff game at Huntsville ISD Stadium. Christian Mongoya ready to kick this one back to the Hornets. J-Bug and Peyton Pryor are back deep to receive. Mongoya puts a leg into this one, kicking towards the middle. J-Bug will have an opportunity to return from the seven-yard line, working this to the near sideline, trying to get some holes across the 20, still bouncing off tacklers to the 25 to the 30. 35, 40, great return by Jeremiah Winfrey. That ought to charge up the offense all the way down near the 45-yard line, and that is where the offense will take over. What a great return, and that's the spark Hornets needed. They needed some kind of life. And I think we got a Hornet down on the near sideline over here. It's J-Bug. Jeremiah Winfrey a bit slow to get up here after that incredible return to the Hornet 47-yard line. Try to generate the offense any way you can, but now our concern is with Jeremiah Winfrey as the training staff led by Brian Parker out to take a look at the young cornerback. We'll step aside and take another break for 30 seconds. Be back in a moment here on the Hornet Nation Broadcast Network. Hi folks, Clint Mack here with Wiesner Buick GMC in Huntsville. It's football season and that always brings cooler weather and brighter days. And here at Wiesner, it brings bigger deals. We have 0.9% APR on select vehicles. That's right folks, 0.9% APR is back. We also have rebates up to $2,500 on select vehicles. We've got a great selection of trucks and SUVs with dealer discounts up to $5,000. So don't miss out on these great deals here at Wiesner Buick GMC in Huntsville or visit us online at WiesnerHuntsville.com, where we are home of the bottom line. GMC is professional grade. 545 remaining in the Radio Mash second quarter of play live from Richmond, Texas at Trailer Stadium. It's 21 to nothing, Randall. A great return a few moments ago by Jeremiah Winfrey up to the Randall 46 or to the Huntsville 46 yard line. One of the best returns tonight, but he is currently down on the field right now being looked at by the Huntsville training staff. And now they're going to roll out the cart here. And usually that's not a great sign. So your heart goes out to that young man. Such a great and funny kid. And he brings such a life to that Hornet defense, and you hate to see that. Yeah, you really do. I mean, he is just so much fun to be around and just a good guy and a very talented athlete, and you hate to see that anybody. They got him here, and they're going to carry him onto the cart here, and he'll head to the locker room to be looked at by the training staff. So our heart goes out to Jeremiah Winfrey. He has set up the Hornet offense in a great spot, but now – Hornets, unfortunately, will be without his incredible and explosive play for the time being. So 
Again, the Hornets will take over here on offense, down 21 to nothing with 545 left to go in this second quarter of play, brought to you by the 17th Annual Radio Mash, presented by Bill Fick Ford. And we'll see if they can generate something here on the offensive side of the ball. Again, J-Bug now being carted off the field here. Again, thoughts and prayers out to him as he will tend to him throughout the rest of this evening. Again, 5.45 left to go here in this second quarter. Hornet offense has had their struggles here in this first half, and we'll see what they can do coming up here in just a few moments. Now trots Marcus Lewis along with the rest of the offense trying. They've got themselves set up in their best field position that they have had. They haven't broken past the 50. But they have a good spot to do so here as we'll return to play. First down and 10 to the 46-yard line in Huntsville territory. Lewis gets the snap on first down. He'll hand it off to Braylon Phelps, trying to cut this one to the middle of the field. He will give him a half yard on the play, making a big stop there on the defensive line, Chase Sims. And that'll bring up a second down and nine for Huntsville. Again, another little handoff up the middle to Phelps. Picks up one yard on the carry. Just again, you know, you don't want to be negative or anything like that. That's just not going to cut it. You got to do more on offense. To the 48, seven yard line, I should say. Lewis sets up on second down and nine with 5-12 left in the second quarter. He'll get the snap out of the shotgun, four man rush for Randall. He feels the pressure. He'll roll here to his right, trying to make the play with his legs. He does get it away and out of bounds. So no intentional grounding on the play, but that will bring up a big third down and nine for Huntsville with 5.04 left to go in the second. Huntsville still only converted one first down so far in this first half, and it was on a penalty, so. Man, that would be a good time to get another first down. And they haven't been able to break really into Randall territory. If they did, it was barely into Randall territory. The line to gain is the Randall 44. They're at the Hornet 47. Third down and nine for the Hornets. Lewis in the shotgun with two receivers. He'll get the snap, roll to the left here, trying to throw, and he has his man at the 40-yard line. Peyton Pryor on the comeback route, and the Hornets able to turn a first down to the 35. Nice pass there by Marcus Lewis. He's rolling to his left. Again, right-handed quarterback throwing to his left. Not easily done, but he makes a great pass there. Picks up the first down. Good job there by the Hornets as a gain of 19 on that Mocha Mocha turning it off. First down to the Randall 35. Lewis in the shotgun with two receivers. One back with him here, Braylon Phelps. He'll get the snap here, handed off to Phelps, working this one to the near sideline, trying to get that upfield. Flag does come in here from the back judge that is in the area of holding. That flag brought to you by a and Propane. This one may be coming further back. Yep, I believe you're right. As Phelps just could not get any forward momentum. going to call that one on Trey Williams, the sophomore offensive lineman. And unfortunately for the Hornets, that'll back him up to the Randall 45-yard line and bring up a first down and 20 to go. So again, the Hornets had their struggles here in this opening half of play. 449 and counting, left to go in the second, down 21 to nothing. First down and 20 from the 45 yard line. Lewis in the shotgun, only two receivers. He claps on first down, he'll drop back, stays in the pocket, fires this one up on a go route to the far sideline, but it's out of the reach of his intended receiver in Peyton Pryor. Had him on the money, Pryor had his defender beat just a little too high. Yep, one-on-one -on -one coverage on the far side and Pryor beats his man by about a step or two and the ball sails over both of their heads. Man, that's unfortunate. But you'll, I like the play call, going very aggressive there on a first and 20, knowing you need to get a huge chunk of yardage. They need that explosive play. If they're able to get that explosive play, Huntsville will have themselves in great position to at least get on the board before you go to the halftime break. Because remember, Randall gets the ball to start the second half. That's the risk you take sometimes when taking the ball first in the ball game. Second and 20, Lewis from the 45 gets the snap. They'll hand it off to Braylon Phelps, running this one up the middle, trying to get to the 40-yard line. Forward progress is stopped at the 41. It's a gain of four for number four, and that will bring up a third down and long to go for Huntsville. Big third down coming up here for the Hornets. They've converted two, one by penalty and one by great pass, and we need another one right here. 
In Huntsville, moving left to right across your radio dial. 4-10 left to go in the second down. 21 to nothing in this district finale tonight. The regular season finale. Playoff implications all over this one tonight. And we have whistles here. Timeout has been taken by the Randall Lions. That is their first here of the half. Two timeouts remaining. We'll keep it right here. Go to the third member of our crew, Luke Scott. He is down there on the sidelines for us this evening. Huntsville in a big third down spot here, Luke. And obviously our heart goes out to J-Bug right now after the, in, the un, undisclosed injury that he suffered a little bit ago. Carted off the field here. You hate it for him. You love that kid. But... Looking at the Huntsville offense, they've got a long way to go to try and convert this first down. Yeah, and Brian just talked about it. This is a big third down. Uh, Huntsville defense has just kind of, you know, they're, they're on, they've been on the field the whole, the whole, pretty much the whole first half. So Huntsville's offense has got to have to find a way here to, to kind of carry some load here and, and try to grind out some points because uh, you definitely don't want to fall behind three points or three um, uh, possessions here before halftime, let alone four. So. Got to find a way here to get some points uh, quickly and go into halftime, only down two possessions. Thank you, Luke, down on the sidelines for us this evening again. 21-0 Randall with 3.59 left to go in the radio mash. Second quarter of play. Teams will break out of the huddle. The timeout was taken by Randall, so each team will have two timeouts remaining in this first half. And it is third down and 16 to go for Huntsville from the Randall 41. They need the Randall 25. The middle of the field here has some openings here, so let's see what Marcus Lewis can do on this big third down. Out of the shotgun, he gets the snap. He'll drop back, gets a good block from his running back. Throwing here, no, he'll just take off and run with it and get out of bounds at the 38-yard line. And a flag is going to fly in on a late hit out of bounds against Randall. This will be a big benefit for the Hornets. Yeah, that is going to be a big benefit for the Hornets. They're going to get a first down out of it, and they're going to get another 15 yards on that late hit out of bounds on Marcus Lewis. That's on Eric Strickland for Richmond Randall, one of the defensive linemen. It's a 15-yard penalty and an automatic first down for the Huntsville Hornets. That flag brought to you by A&D Propane. They will move the ball all the way up to the 23-yard line. So the Hornets finally deep into Randall territory, knocking on the door of the Murray Insurance and Financial Services red zone with 3.54 left to go in the Radio Mash second quarter of play. Lewis out of the gun on first down. It's a quarterback run here to the near sideline, and he's able to lower the shoulder and take it up a yard to the 22, and that'll set up second down and nine for Huntsville. It is really important. This is the best field position the Hornets have had in this first half. They've got to capitalize on it, and they've got to get seven, man. Three's not going to cut it. They really got to punch it in. Braylon Phelps will be the back here on this second down and nine. Trips receivers here to the far sideline. Hunter Lorenz, he'll go one-on-one -on -one way to the far sideline. Lewis on second down and nine out of the shotgun. Gets the snap, four-man rush for Randall. He is hit hard at the 30-yard line. That is a big, big sack for the guy that was hit him out of bounds as well, Eric Strickland, and that is going to back the Hornets up to the 31. Wow, that was a heck of a shot right there. Marcus just got drilled. He was rolling to his left, and man, I don't know if it was the D end or the or the 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 weak linebacker that got in there and just put a shot on him. Third down and long. Once again for Huntsville, they were able to convert the last third down and long because of a penalty. But now, and here's the other big thing too, Brian. You got to find a way to get some forward momentum here because you'll have the wind helping you. You got to give a shot to Joseph Mejia to try and at least get some points on the board before you go to halftime. Two and a half to play in the second. Down 21 to nothing are the Hornets. Lewis, he'll work out of the shotgun with three receivers. He'll get the snap, rolling to his left. Now he comes set at the line of scrimmage, sees a hole across to the 30, working this one back to the near sideline, but he is upended at the 28-yard line here by Richmond Randall's Paul Sanyaulu, and that will bring up fourth down and long for Huntsville. And again, the line they needed to gain was the 13. And here comes Joseph Mejia on for the field goal try. It's in the middle of the field at the 27. So if I'm doing my math correctly, Lorenz is going to line up here around the 35. This is going to be a 45-yard try for Joseph Mejia. Certainly, uh, I believe, the longest field goal uh, for Mejia coming up. He does have the win in his favor. 
But this is a big kick coming up right here. Trying to get the point. Huntsville on the board. The Nelson Amaya's Collision Center field goal. The snap is down by Lorenz. It's a fake by Hunter Lorenz. He's going to throw this one to a wide open Braylon Phelps. Stays in bounds. Stretches for the marker. Where are they going to spot him? Oh, my goodness. They're going to spot him shy at the 15-yard line. A great effort by Braylon Phelps to try and stretch out for the first down. But the Huntsville Hornets are two yards short. They go to the bag of tricks on the fake field goal, but they will be just two yards shy. Wow. Great pass there by Hunter Lorenz. I mean, he's the holder. He rolls out, throws it. Wasn't exactly on target, but it certainly was caught. And, man, you got to give credit to trying to reach out and getting that first. It was a little touch high by Hunter Lorenz, but still a great effort to get it to the back. And Braylon Phelps did a great job to stay, try and stay in bounds, but he is just shy. Turnover on downs, first and 10 for Randall from the 15. As the Hornets nearly jump off sides and the flags come out, free play for Randall. It is incomplete. Intended receiver was D'Amico Harvey. Brent Carroll was the one back in coverage, but we will have flags on this play. Yep, it's going to be offsides on the Hornets. Man alive, they've had a lot of penalties go against them here in the first half, and Randall had a big one with that out-of-bounds out of, out of bounds hit, but that is it for them, really. It'll stay first down. It'll bring up first down and five. Only a minute 29 left to go here in the Radio Mash second quarter. Each team with two timeouts remaining. So Randall has some time to try and get the ball down the field. And coming up here, we'll get a word with head coach Rodney Southern as we lead into the Northside Baptist Church halftime report with his team down 21 to nothing for the time being. Huntsville's defense trying to hold them where they're at. Gabrana gets the snap out of the shotgun. Ball is dropped by William Callis at the 19-yard line. But I believe he landed right back on top of it, so Hornets can't catch a break there. But brief moment of a scary brief moment there for Richmond Randall. Bring up second down and five on the no-gainer ultimately. Yeah, just trying to hand off up the middle, and the exchange between the QB and the center was just not very good at all. We're second down and five here. Five receiver set for Scribonic, working alone out of the backfield. Claps has the snap, looking towards here the near sideline, dropped by his intended target, Jackson Montalongo. It's that simple case of trying to take off with the ball before it hits your mitts. It's incomplete, third down and five with 55 seconds left. Montalongo's running just kind of a, an in route uh, or short post, and man, it hit him right in his hands and just couldn't come up with it. That brings this third down and five, a big one here for Randall. Can they have two timeouts remaining in the second? Can the Hornet defense make a stand? Shotgun formation for Skrabonik. He get, tries to get the Hornets to jump, but they do not. So staying disciplined there. Let's see what Randall does here on this third down and five. The back, William Callis, now motions to the left side. Four receivers. Huntsville shifts the defensive line. Flag comes out. And it's going to be a delay of game called against Richmond Randall. I don't think they got the timeout immediately, so that is going to back up the Lions here five and make this an even harder third down and ten. And with 52 seconds left. Hornets can get a stop here and force Randall to punt. They may get two opportunities to put points on the board before half. Third down and 10 from the Randall 15-yard line, moving right to left. Play clock down to 10 here for the Lions. Skorbonic alone in the backfield. How about this? Four wide receivers here to the near sideline. As Skorbonic gets the snap, a screen play here, but flags are going to fly in, and man, is that Randall sideline incensed right now. As what are they going to call here? That is a false start called against Randall, and back him up another five. Wow. Talk about them not having a whole lot of penalties except that personal foul, and all of a sudden they have three back-to-back. -back. More folks tuning in on the KSAM YouTube this evening. Mike Allen tuning in, Joshua James along with Shelly Cleveland. Amongst others, good friend of ours, Sally Dow, is tuning in as well on this third down and 15 to go for Randall. They need the 30. Here comes the blitz of McCorick Norman. They hand it off to the back. He slips across would-be tacklers to the 20, 25 to the 30, 35 to the 40. Across midfield, he has only got two men to beat. And how about this for Landon William Callis? He's going to take this one 85 yards for a house call. Touchdown, Richmond Randall. A nice run there by Randall. I mean, just takes it around the left side, cuts it up the... Sidelines, and he was gone. It is uh, an ugly first half so far for the Hornets here tonight. 45 seconds remaining in this second quarter to play. 
Point after try coming up here for Christian Munguia with 45 seconds left. Try to make this a 28 to nothing ball game. Another big explosive play for the Randall Lions. Waiting the snap here is the holder, Jackson Montalongo. He gets the hold down and the kick by Munguia. Line drive kick. Splits the uprights and is good with 28 to nothing. Randall with the lead. We're at the top of the hour. We must pause 10 seconds for station identification on the Hornet Nation Broadcast Network. This is the Hornet Nation Broadcast Network. 101.7 KSAM Huntsville. And on the KSAM mobile app, Stim Hornets. Back here in Richmond at Trailer Stadium, 28 to nothing. It's been all Randall Lions so far in this district season finale. Between Randall and Huntsville, man, there's going to be a lot of adjustments to be made in that locker room for the Huntsville Hornets. They have had their struggles tonight. They've had really one great offensive drive that got down inside the Randall 25, but were not able to cash in with any points. And now find themselves down in a four-score hole, 28 to nothing. It's going to have to take 24 more minutes in the second half to try and make a comeback of all ages to try and host your first ever playoff game at Huntsville ISD Stadium next week. You're right. This is uh, what we're hoping for, the tale of two halves, because we don't want to see another half like this. That is for sure. Mongoyo will get ready to boot this one back to Huntsville. They'll try to reset here. 45 seconds left and two timeouts. I'll be intrigued to see what Huntsville will decide to do here. Mongoya is going to line up here for a squib kick, it appears. He's only standing four yards back from this ball. It's going to be a pooch kick here to the near sideline. Savion Conte will be content to let that ball roll out of bounds, so not the greatest of kicks for Randall. And Huntsville will take advantage of that, take it out to the 35-yard line, and that is where they will reset the offense. Again, 45 seconds and two timeouts. That does give the Hornets some time if they can work the boundaries very, very, con not conservatively, that's not the word I'm looking for, very, very smart here. Marcus Lewis trots the offense back out there along with Hunter Lorenz, Savion Conte, Melton Green the third, who had an incredible catch a week ago in the huge win over the Brenham Cubs. To put Huntsville in the position they are tonight. Obviously, coming in tonight, you didn't expect to be down four scores, but that's where you're at. Got to try and generate some offense here at the very end of the half. Lewis out of the shotgun on first down. He'll get the snap. He'll pass. That is caught at the 40-yard line. That is Melton Green the third with the catch. It's a gain of about four on the play. That'll bring up second down and six for Huntsville. And with about 30 seconds left, uh, not moving with a whole lot of urgency here, but we'll see if they can keep this ball moving as the second quarter winds to a finish. Yeah, nice little pass on the left side there by Marcus Lewis. I mean, uh, picked up uh, about four yards on it. 20 seconds left. Lewis on second down and six. Gets the snap. Throws over the head of his, not over the head of his receiver, but just a bit too hard in there for Melton Green the third. But also great defense on the back end for Richmond Randalls and Paul Sanyaolu that stops the clock with 15 seconds left to set up another third down for Huntsville. In Huntsville, they're locked into the postseason. They know where they, they are going to play. It's a matter of if they're going to host or will they go on the road next week. Right now, not in the best of spots. Some dire straits, but we'll see if they can respond here. Third down and six. Lewis keeps it, stepping up. He is swallowed up, trying to work it out of the pocket around the 35-yard line, and that is what will take us to the end of this second quarter of play. Huntsville finds themselves down 28 to nothing here against the home team, Richmond Randall. This has been a tough half for the Hornets. They have another half to try and right the ship, to try and come away with the big victory tonight. They will need to make the comeback of all ages, like we said a few moments ago, to try and make it happen. Luke Scott is down on the field. He'll try to get a word here with head coach Rodney Southern as we go to the halftime break. Luke is standing by. Luke, you got it, my friend. Thanks, Carlos. Here with head coach Rodney Southern. Coach, uh, what needs to change here coming into the second half? Well, we got to get first downs, and we got to do a better job. The first guy... Uh, getting to number one tackling so the other guys can wrap him up. Uh, we've missed too many tackles and we hadn't got enough downs. All right. Back to you. 28 nothing as we transition now to the Northside Baptist Church halftime report. It comes your way next here on the Hornet Nation Broadcast Network.
Express Urgent Care Clinic in Huntsville would like to help keep your family and friends safe and prevent the spread of viruses. They are a walk-in clinic and offer quick, efficient flu and strep treatment. Techspress Urgent Care Clinic offers a variety of procedures open seven days a week. Check their website at techspressurgentcare.com and visit them on Facebook. That's Techspress Urgent Care Clinic, located at 193 I-45 South, near Bahama Bucks and Buffalo Wild Wings in Huntsville. Hey folks, it's Steven over here at Adams Furniture. We're your Huntsville, Texas hometown furniture store. Come in and see why we carry the top brands with great customer service. We carry brands such as Tempur-Pedic, Sealy Hybrid, Sarda Mattresses. We have the biggest selection of Lazy Boy recliners, double reclining sofas, reclining and love seats. We have all American made hardwood bedroom furniture, living room furniture, all American made lift chairs. All this is in stock and ready for delivery at Adams Furniture. We are cheaper in the country. Shop local with us and save your money. It's Adams Furniture, 30 State Highway, 75 North and 10th Street. Switching is easy. We do it all the time. We switch on the lights. We switch TV channels. You can switch and save with State Farm. In fact, State Farm agent Diana K. Barnes, right here in Huntsville, can switch you over so you can start saving today. Diana and her team are ready to welcome you to the State Farm neighborhood. Just give her a call when you want the real deal. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. The 17th Annual Radio Mash, presented by Bill Fick Ford, is December 6th and 7th at the HEB parking lot in Huntsville. Will you please answer the call once again and give generously? Your donation of toys, food, pet supplies, and gift cards stay in Huntsville and Walker County to aid local families and children. You make a smile happen. Thank you. From all of us at 101.7 KSAM. Exceeding all expectations for three generations who can call us day or night. McWilliams Heating, Cooling, and Plumbing provides service you can salute from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. seven days a week with no overtime fees. Check our current air conditioning and plumbing service offers and schedule online today at callmcwilliams.com. Lots of TLCLA 2150. All of East Texas knows when your AC goes, we got the best service round by far. We're not comfortable until you are. Hey y'all, Josh Ward here for Bill Fick Ford in Huntsville. Good country music and Ford trucks just go hand in hand. And for the best customer service, the place to go is Bill Fick Ford. Not only do they offer a great selection of inventory, it's a great place to do business. And at Bill Fick Ford, our first responders, our veterans, and active military always receive an appreciation bonus. Stop in today for the best deals on a new Ford F-150 or build your own while the order bank is open. Shop online at BillFickFordHuntsville.com. Yeah, are you thinking of selling, buying, or investing? This is Frank Oliveras, United States Marine Corps veteran with Pinnacle Realty. From my family to yours, we want to say thank you to all the friends and families for trusting us with your vision and dream for the past 13 years. Remember, to our family, relationship matters, and friends turn into family. Give me a call, Frank Oliveras, for your real estate needs today, 936-577-6419 or 936-661-1575. Thank you, and we love you in Christ Jesus. AB Squared Self Storage is your local go-to self-storage facility that can help give you the extra space you need, big or small. From non-climate and climate-controlled storage to parking spaces for your car, boat, trailer, and RV, they have it all. AB Squared Self Storage has 24-hour computerized gate access, around-the-clock security camera monitoring, no long-term lease commitment, and convenient payment options. Give them a call today at 936-755-5000 or reserve your space online at www.ab2selfstorage.com. Your brand is your business. Shop local with Advantage Specialties where you will get service with a personal touch. Hello, I'm Stephanie Pitts, owner and operator of Advantage Specialties. Advantage Specialties offers screen printing and embroidery on site. Let Advantage Specialties get you ready for your next event with cups, apparel, caps, pins, and everything else you could need. Go to AdvantageSpecialties.com or call our team at 936-291-3222 to start that order now. Sing them Hornets! This is the Northside Baptist Church Hornets High School Halftime Report. Here's Brian Adams and the voice of the Hornets, Carlos Zimmerman. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, here to Richmond, Texas, and Trailer Stadium. This district season finale on the Hornet Nation Broadcast Network. It is 28 to nothing. Richmond Randall has the lead here at the halftime break, brought to you by our friends at Northside Baptist Church. Welcome you back inside the broadcast booth. I'm Carlos Zimmerman. Alongside of me is the former Hornet quarterback, Brian Adams. It has not been 
the first half that Huntsville was looking for coming out of the gate tonight. They saw some spurts of greatness there in that first half, but have not been able to generate any offense, and obviously the defense has had their struggles in this first half. Brian, what else is there to say? It's been a, it's been a, it's been a rough first half, but that's why you play two halves. Uh, that's correct, and you know, give uh, Randall a lot of credit. I mean, they're playing great offensively, very good defensively. Um, you know, our sideline uh, reporter, Luke Scott, just came into the booth, and we were talking, and uh, – you know, their DBs for Randall, man, they're playing a heck of a ball game. There's not a whole lot of separation between the receivers and the uh, DBs, and you got to give them credit for that. Um, Huntsville has to turn it around. They've got to make some major adjustments at halftime because they have dug themselves a very deep hole. Indeed they have, but... You know, if there's anyone that can try and get it done, it is the Hornets. They have made big comebacks from this deficit before in years past, but obviously a different team right now. So we'll see what adjustments they make here at the halftime break to see if they can try and break out of this funk that they have themselves in for the time being. Looking at the defense, though, they have made some good stops tonight. They were able to force a Randall punt early on in the first half. Brian, for a majority of this first half, it was a one-score game. Randall had not been able to generate much offense outside of their one score in the first quarter. It's the second quarter that where the Hunt, well, the Huntsville Hornets just kind of unraveled on defense, but you can't really blame them too much because they're on the field all the time. Yeah, no, you're right, and, and and you've got to keep them off the field. That, that's I don't care what level of football it is. You know, when the defense stays on the field as much as the Hornets have so far tonight, uh, they're going to be worn down, and that would happen at the pro level, college level. It does not matter. Somehow this offense, they have to start doing their part, and that's getting first downs like Rodney Southern said before halftime. Moving the chains, having a sustained drive, and then finally, man, they got to put points on the board. And that's just something they have not been able to do in the first half, and that's why we say you play two halves of football. But Huntsville's got themselves in some dire straits right now. Again, the, the tail of the tape was tonight. You win, you host a playoff game at Huntsville ISD Stadium next week, likely against that of Fort Ben Marshall, an old playoff foe from so many years past, dating all the way back to the Missouri City Miracle in 2018. That is where that rivalry kind of started. Fort Ben Marshall led by now Miami Dolphin Devon A. Chain at that time. But now Huntsville finds themselves in a deficit. If they lose tonight to Randall, Huntsville will drop to the three seed and unfortunately would have to go on the road for the opening round playoff game, likely against the winner of Texas City or Nederland. We'll have to wait and see how that ball game pans out tomorrow. Lots of other things still to be decided, but what we see on the field right now, Huntsville is not in a position to win, but they have an opportunity in the second half if the Huntsville Hornets offense can drive the ball down the field. If they're able to do that, they can work their way back into this ball game. That's just plain and simple because that, in turn, gives a drive to the defense to be able to try and know that, you know, your offense is starting to wake up. You can start making some stops, and now they have this halftime break to reset here. I know they're exhausted right now. It's cold out there, and it's, it's tough. I know it is from my playing experience. I'm sure you can say the same thing, Brian, but if the offense can start to generate points, We'll have a couple of the different ball game. It just didn't happen in the first half. You know, the defense is going to come out first in the third quarter, and they need to get a stop. They need to set the tone, and then the offense come out on the field, and they need to worry about one touchdown at a time. Get the first one, play good defense, come back and get the others one at a time. If they can do that, they'll work their way back into this ball game. If not, I mean, this could absolutely be a, a, just a blowout. As the Huntsville Hornet Military Marching Band playing down on the field right now for the fans in attendance here this evening. Again, your score here at the halftime break, 28 to nothing. Randall with the lead in this regular season finale. You know, if Randall wins, they will come back here to Trailer Stadium and host a playoff game next week. Likely of that against, I'm trying to remember off the top of my head, likely against a Fort Ben Marshall, how this their game is panning out right now, which we'll talk about later in the Texas High School football scoreboard update. So they're playing for a lot tonight, and you got to give credit to Randall. This is a relatively, not just a young team, this is a relatively young program. This is one of the brand new high schools in Lamar Consolidated ISD. There are six different high schools with, I believe, a seventh one on the way for this district. So this is one of the younger programs, and they have been building for this success. It's just come at a ex very expedited rate. you got to give credit to the quarterback and Tyler Skorbonik. He has had a great start, a transfer quarterback, was not on the team a year ago, and his playmakers have been making it. And really, I want to highlight the young running back, Landon William Callis has been running rough shot on the Hornet defense tonight. You got to give that credit to him. Absolutely, they deserve all the credit in the world. I mean, uh, you know, you know, the quarterback uh, Skrabonic is just uh, doing a phenomenal job so far, leading his team in the first half. And you're right, man. That little running back Callis, man, uh, uh, that guy. Not only is he super fast, but he's got some incredible moves and and breaks those long ones. And and he's really kind of untouched on most of those runs. So the Hornet defense 
man, they've got to turn it around. They have. He has three offensive touchdowns on the night so far, has Landon William Callis, and he is definitely a very highly touted running back in terms of his future. So can the Hornet defense respond? We will have to wait and see as we continue on here on the Northside Baptist Church Halftime Report. Coming your way next is a special edition of Hornet's Nest, our good friend from HISD, Shannon Hollis. Well, I was able to give us an update on what's going around in the Hornet's Nest. That is coming your way next here on the Northside Baptist Church Halftime Report, live from Richmond, Texas, and Trailer Stadium on the Hornet Nation Broadcast Network. Stop any of the guys coming off the field at halftime, and most would tell you they need the rest. There's been a lot of helmet clashing and pad slapping in the first half. They need to rest and recuperate for the second half. We all need rest from the bruises and hard knocks that life can sometimes deliver. I want to suggest you come out to Northside this Sunday. Take a break from the playing field of life. Rest, recuperate, clear your mind. Make a plan for the new week ahead. I'm Reagan Cooksey, pastor of Northside Baptist Church. Are you listening? It's time to stir up the hornet's nest. Here's Shannon Hollis. Happy Friday Night Lights on a Thursday night, Hornet Nation fans. Thanks for tuning in and listening to the broadcast of tonight's football game here on KSAM Radio. Here's what's buzzing in HISD. Hornet Varsity Football came into tonight's game with a playoff spot clinched. But as to who will host that by district round of the Class 5A Division II playoff still depends on the outcome of tonight's game. As soon as all of those playoff details have been finalized, we will share them on the Hornet Athletics and HISD websites and social media pages. No matter what, we need our Hornet Nation fans to come pack the stands to cheer on our boys. There's not much better than Hornet football playing well until the holiday season. If you can't make it to the game, you can always tune in right here to KSAM Radio to listen or watch the live stream on YouTube via KSAM Sports and the Hornet Nation Broadcast Network. We were extremely honored to be able to present our very first inductees of the inaugural class of our Huntsville ISD Hall of Champions during last week's home football game. Please help us congratulate Coach Trevor Fountain, Jane Clements Monday, Ethan O'Brien, and Joreen Waddell. These four individuals have accomplished outstanding lifetime achievements and they truly do represent the very best of the best among former Hornets. Please help us congratulate our Lady Hornet volleyball team for making the playoffs. The Lady Hornets played White House in the first round of the UIL playoffs this past Tuesday at Fairfield High School. The Lady Hornets fought hard, but they came up short. These girls have had a great season, and they all have wonderful Hornet spirit and school pride. And man, did we enjoy the ride. A special shout out to senior Chelsea Butler, who hit her thousandth career kill during this season. This girl is something special to watch, and we're so excited that we will be able to continue watching her play the sport that she loves at Sam Houston State University next fall when she plays for the Lady Bearcats. Sting them and eat them up, cats. This Saturday, November the 4th, Stewart Elementary is hosting their fall festival from 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. Tickets will be available to purchase on site. There will be lots of games, kids' activities, a bounce house, food, fun, and more. This fall festival fundraiser is open to anyone, so please come on out and join us. Everyone is welcome. Huntsville ISD will host a special program's parent information night next Monday, November the 6th, from 5 p.m. to 6.30 p.m. at the Huntsville High School Commons. This will be a come-and-go event. Please park in the back parking lot area and use the rear entry doors into the Commons. Come and learn all about our bilingual ESL, 504 dyslexia and special education programs in Huntsville ISD. Specific program information, child find information, and resources for student supports will be shared. All parents and students of Huntsville ISD and the surrounding communities are welcome to attend. It's hard to believe that November is officially here. Huntsville ISD has so much to be thankful for. It's such a blessing to see so many wonderful things happening across our school district. And we want our community to know how very thankful we are for your wonderful support. Huntsville ISD will have a district holiday break for Thanksgiving from November the 24th through November the 28th. All Huntsville ISD campuses and facilities will be closed that entire week. So parents, please be sure that you've made alternative arrangements for any child care that may be needed that week as there will be no school. We hope you enjoy listening to the rest of tonight's game here on KSAM. 
Good luck, Hornets. Let's sting them. It's a great day to be a Hornet. We are building champions. Every one, every day. Halftime is a time of rest and refueling. A time to reflect and get ready for what is coming. Friends, Sundays are a great halftime for your life. The last week is behind you, and Sunday is a fresh start to a new week. It's to be a day of rest, a day to recharge. We believe there's no better place to do this than Northside Baptist Church. I invite you to come see us soon. I believe you'll be recharged and replenished as we worship God together. Come to the cross. We'll show you the Savior. I'm Reagan Cooksey, pastor of Northside Baptist Church. Are you listening? Hi, this is Jacob Ruffin, number seven, varsity safety, and you listen to K-Sound, Sting of Hornets. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, here on the Hornet Nation Broadcast Network, powered by K-Sam Sports. Here in the Northside Baptist Church Halftime Report, 28 to nothing. Randall with the lead for the time being right now against your Hornets. It's, it was a tough go in the first half, but the adjustments need to be made here in this second half if Huntsville wants to make a huge comeback against a very good Randall team to try. And like we said all night long so far, being able to host a playoff game at Huntsville ISD Stadium. And really, really, if you think about it all intents and purposes, it would make up for those games that you lost earlier in the season when you when the stadium was still not quite ready. It made its debut against Brian Rudder just earlier uh, a month ago in October. But Huntsville's only played two games at the new stadium, not a full season like everyone had hoped. But the fact that they're in there and the potential of hosting a playoff game there is absolutely huge. Right now, it's a 28-0 lead for Randall, so that hope is looking a little bleak at the moment. But like we said, that's why you play a second half of football to try and rally back. This is <clears throat> such a much better team than what we've seen so far in the first half by the Hornets. I, I mean, they, uh, they're just struggling in all aspects of the game. Um, and they've got to figure it out. And, the, and offensively, I, I think you've got to you, you got to do a much better job passing the football because that will get those linebackers off the line of scrimmage a little bit, backing them up, but they're not afraid of the pass at the moment. So they're lining up eight in a box, man, and the running game is just non-existent. They've got to change that offensively. Well, and you look at the running game, it's been a tough go tonight because you don't have your leading rusher and Trayshawn Brown out there on the field. I mean, Braylon Phelps, we call them a two-headed dragon for a reason. They're both very, very capable of leading the running game. And Braylon Phelps has done a good job of that this year. He has done a lot better protecting the ball. He had some fumbling trouble earlier in non-district, but he has been solid in the district play. But you not you don't have your explosive rusher in Trayshawn Brown. He, when he hits those holes and he gets to that second level, he's off and going, you can't stop him. But... That's the struggle you have there. In the passing game, we'll call it for what it is. There's been two catches tonight for the Huntsville Hornets. A big one to Peyton Pryor down the field and then a little short pass to Braylon Phelps out of the backfield. That's all the catches that have been made. I know it's cold down there, so it is tougher to catch the ball when it is cold, but at the same time, the you got to put your receivers in a good position to make that catch happen. Absolutely you do, and, and, and if you have – Good passing, you're going to have good running. Again, they're going to complement each other, but you can, you're not going to have one without the other, and so far they don't have anything going offensively, running the ball or throwing the ball. And hopefully here at halftime they made those proper changes that they need to do because if they don't, again, this could be a runaway. And then you look at the defensive side of things. Like we said earlier in, earlier on here on the Northside Baptist Church Halftime Report, you can't really put too much of fault on them because they're tired. I, I, I played linebacker, and when we were out there on the field, granted, I played six-man football. It's a completely different animal than 11-man football, but this thing here is the same from every level, like you said earlier, from Pop Warner all the way up to the NFL. If your defense is out there on the field for exorbitant amounts of time, they are going to get exhausted. You see more hands on, when you see hands on the hips, that means they're tired, and th and that you got to find a way to get them off the field quicker. But when they have been on the field tonight, they've made some great plays. It's just Randall has made better plays, to be honest, on the offensive side. Oh, absolutely, they have, and and they're taking full advantage of it. You know, again, uh, I, I mean, we've had people uh, that are watching this game on our on our live stream, you know, comment the fact that the the Hornets have their hands on their hips and they're exhausted and and things like that. And that's because they've been out on the field the whole first half. You got to have sustained drives offensively. You got to move the chains. Give your defense a rest because if they can get a rest, they will be able to help you in that ball game. But if they're out on the field the whole time, they're going to be exhausted and it's going to be a very long haul. 
And really, we haven't been able to talk much about the third level of the team here, the special teams. Joseph Mejia had an opportunity earlier on, but they actually turned it into a fake field goal with Hunter Lorenz throwing one of his first passes of the year. It was caught by Braylon Phelps on the sideline, just went out of bounds just shy as the pass led him just a little bit too far. But either way, still a great effort to go to the bag of tricks if you're the Huntsville Hornets to just try and make something happen, make a play that changed the momentum in your direction. So I loved that play call there from head coach Rodney Southern. It just did not pan out the way he had envisioned it to. But Huntsville's making the adjustments in the locker room right now as we speak. And when we come back here on the Northside Baptist Church Halftime Report, we'll have your halftime adjustments brought to you by Brian Adams here, as well as we'll take a look at the Texas High School football scoreboard when we come back here in a moment on the Hornet Nation Broadcast Network. Hi, I'm Reagan Cooksey, and I have a thought I want to share with you. Are you listening? I drove through the Whitewater Express car wash. There was a torrent of soap and water and whirling brushes. Then I noticed the pressurized water as it forcefully sprayed on top of my car. I noticed how the water pelted the area between the glass and the seal. If it were not for that seal, I would have gotten washed along with my car. That little rubber seal kept the water in check and did not allow it to get inside the car. I thought about Jesus, how he seals my life as I go through this crazy world we live in. I thought about how he seals me from sin and Satan. Are you sealed by Jesus? I'm Ray Cooksey, pastor of Northside Baptist Church. Are you listening? Northside Baptist Church is a vibrant, growing body of believers located at 1207 FM 980 in Huntsville, Texas. Check us out on the web at NBCHuntsville.com. Northside Baptist Church, going to people in Christ to reach people for Christ. Just under eight minutes left here on the Northside Baptist Church Halftime Report. Live tonight in Richmond, Texas at Trailer Stadium. It's a beautiful night for some Thursday night high school football on the Hornet Nation Broadcast Network. Uh, as man, oh man, it has been a tough one tonight here for Huntsville in this first half of play, but that's why you play two halves of football to try and make something happen. Brian, your halftime adjustments for the Hornets to try and come away with a huge come-from-behind victory. Well, they really offensively have to come out and they have to make a statement. Um, they've got to move the chains. I mean, we've talked about it at nauseum. They've got to have sustained drives. And they just need to get some momentum at their back and, and, and start having some good things happen for them because nothing has worked out really good for the Hornets so far in this first half. If they can change that thing around and the defense can get out there and make some stops, maybe make a big turnover, the Hornets are going to have an opportunity. Absolutely they will. That's your halftime adjustments brought to you by Brian Adams right there. As we now look at the Texas high school football scoreboard, a lot of this is the last week of the regular season with the playoffs beginning next week in the by-district round. Of course, our eyes are on the adjacent district in District 9 as we have our eye on the Dayton and Fort Bend Marshall game. Fort Bend Marshall have been all over Dayton up to the where we are at in the ball game right now. They're in the third quarter, but Dayton just got on the board for the first time tonight. They are now down 27-7 to against Fort Bend. Marshall with 839 and counting left to go in the third quarter of play. So that game is not quite over just yet. Nederland and Texas City, that's the other game we're going to have our eye on now with how this game has gone so far here tonight in Richmond. Nederland and Texas City, they play tomorrow at Stingery Stadium at 7 o'clock. That could potentially be a Hornet opponent if the Hornets are not able to come from behind and win this one here tonight. Other games in District 9, Galena Park and Port Natchez Groves play tomorrow at Indian Stadium at 7 o'clock. Santa Fe and Fort Bend Willowridge, they play on Saturday at 1 p.m at Ken Hall Stadium. Looking around District 10 for the Huntsville Hornets. Of course, our ball game here. Randall leading 28 to nothing here at the halftime break. Uh, two games will go live tomorrow. Lake Creek and Brenham. That is quite the battle there because Brenham could play spoiler for Lake Creek. If Huntsville is able to come back here tonight and Lake Creek loses to Brenham tomorrow, the teams will share the district title. Lake Creek would get the tiebreaker due to the head-to-head -head win over Huntsville. On the other side, Brenham, they are locked in as the four seed, likely playing Port Natchez Groves in the first round, but man, do they want to play with some urgency to try and give them some momentum against the top team out of District 9. That game's coming your way tomorrow at 7.30 p.m. at Cub Stadium. And then Brian Rudder and Montgomery just playing for the standard coming up tomorrow at Montgomery ISD Stadium. Brian Rudder and Montgomery both eliminated from playoff contention. And of course, our ball game here, Randall leading 28 to nothing, and that is a look at the Texas High School football scoreboard, and that will do it for the Northside Baptist Church halftime report. As we get ready for the start of the second half, Randall will have the ball to start the second half as Huntsville will try and make the comeback of all comebacks to try and get the two seed in District 10 5A Division 2. We'll be back here in a moment as that wraps up the Northside Baptist Church halftime report. Live from Richmond, Texas at Trailer Stadium on the Hornet Nation Broadcast Network. 
This has been a Northside Baptist Church Hornets Halftime Report. Stay tuned for more Huntsville High School football on KSAM. This is the Hornet Nation Broadcast Network, powered by KSAM Sports. Switching is easy. We do it all the time. We switch on the lights. We switch TV channels. You can switch and save with State Farm. In fact, State Farm agent Diana K. Barnes, right here in Huntsville, can switch you over so you can start saving today. Diana and her team are ready to welcome you to the State Farm neighborhood. Just give her a call when you want the real deal. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Exceeding all expectations for three generations, you can call us day or night. McWilliams Heating, Cooling, and Plumbing provides service you can salute from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. seven days a week with no overtime fees. Check our current air conditioning and plumbing service offers and schedule online today at callmcwilliams.com. Lots of TLCLA 2150. All of East Texas knows when your AC goes, we got the best service round by far. We're not comfortable. I'll tell you why. Hey y'all, Josh Ward here for Bill Fit Ford in Huntsville. Good country music and Ford trucks just go hand in hand. And for the best customer service, the place to go is Bill Fit Ford. Not only do they offer a great selection of inventory, it's a great place to do business. And at Bill Fit Ford, our first responders, our veterans, and active military always receive an appreciation bonus. Stop in today for the best deals on the new Ford F-150 or build your own while the order bank is open. Shop online at BillFitFordHuntsville.com. Yeah, boy. Are you thinking of selling, buying, or investing? This is Frank Olivares, United States Marine Corps veteran with Pinnacle Realty. From my family to yours, we want to say thank you to all the friends and family for trusting us with your vision and dream for the past 13 years. Remember, to our family, relationship matters, and friends turn into family. Give me a call, Frank Olivares, for your real estate needs today. 936-577-6419 or 936-661-1575. Thank you, and we love you in Christ Jesus. From joyful occasions to the unexpected, First Franklin Financial makes loans for a living, offering fixed rates and flexible terms on loans up to $15,000. The next time you're looking for some extra cash to help make ends meet, come see the friendly Franklin folks or visit us at 1FFC.com to learn more. All loan terms and APRs depend on meeting our underwriting and income criteria and may require collateral. First Franklin Financial Corporation is licensed by the Virginia State Corporation Commission CFI 215, Georgia Residential Mortgage Licensee 5656, MMLS number 1416540, not available in North Carolina. TWFG and More Insurance has been proudly serving the Huntsville and Walker County area since 2003. Ranked number one in Texas as an independently owned insurance provider, our independence affords us the freedom to shop insurance carriers and coverages that best suits our clients' specific needs. TWFG offers personal and commercial, life, health, and flood insurance. Call Wayland Moore at 936-293-8121 or drop by 1212 10th Street in Huntsville, Texas at TWFG and More Insurance. Insurance. Our policy is caring. Exceeding all expectations for three generations, you can call us day or night. McWilliams Heating, Cooling, and Plumbing provides service you can salute from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. seven days a week with no overtime fees. Check our current air conditioning and plumbing service offers and schedule online today at callmcwilliams.com. Lots of TLCLA 2150. All of East Texas knows when your AC goes, we got the best service round by far. We're not comfortable until you are. Hey y'all, Josh Ward here for Bill Fit Ford in Huntsville. Good country music and Ford trucks just go hand in hand. And for the best customer service, the place to go is Bill Fit Ford. Not only do they offer a great selection of inventory, it's a great place to do business. And at Bill Fit Ford, our first responders, our veterans, and active military always receive an appreciation bonus. Stop in today for the best deals on the new Ford F-150 or build your own while the order bank is open. Shop online at BillFitFordHuntsville.com. Yeah, boy. KSAM Hornet Football is presented by Bill Fick Ford. Welcome this back, is ladies. Rins, varsity wide receiver. And you listen to the Huntsville Hornets on 101.7 KSAM. Sting a Hornet. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, here on the Hornet Nation Broadcast Network, powered by KSAM Sports. Carlos Zimmerman here alongside Brian Adams, live from the Pinnacle Realty Advisors broadcast booth, getting ready to come out of the halftime break. The Hornets down 28 to nothing over the Randall Lions in this district finale this evening. It's going to be paramount that Huntsville will be able to make the adjustments they needed to make here at the halftime break to try and work their way back into a ball game that they are down four scores against. And unfortunately for Huntsville, Randall is going to get the ball here to start the second half after Huntsville took the ball 
going into the ball game at kickoff. Brian, we've talked about the halftime adjustments here. Now it's up to the Hornets. They have 24 minutes to try and come back down 28 to nothing. They have to make defensive stops at the same time. At this point, there's no margin for error on the defense. You cannot give up anything more than zeros to Randall at this point in the ballgame. Totally agree. It's all up to the defense to get off the field, get the ball back into the offense's hands, and then the offense has to score points because time is not going to be on their side, Carlos. It is going to tick away like that because the backs are against the wall and they're down by four touchdowns. They have got to score quickly. It's been a very long time since Huntsville's found themselves in a deficit like this one. You haven't really seen one this season this big with how they have played through non-district and through district play so far. It's been one possession games and two possession games in their losses. They don't want to come away with a loss tonight by all intents and purposes. They want to come away with a win. Because ultimately, in the words of Great Herm Edwards, you play the win the game, and that's what they got to do here in this second half to come back and win against Randall. Joseph Mejia has got the ball teed up here for the Diana K. Barnes State Farm Insurance kickoff. Two back deep to receive for Randall, standing really not giving too much respect here to Joseph Mejia around the 15-yard line with the wind blowing slightly. Mejia will do a pooch kick here, and it is a fair catch back at around the 26-yard line, and that is where Randall will set up shop up 28 to nothing to start this third quarter of play. So the defense is going to get their opportunity. Here we go, starting the third quarter. They really need something big to happen, an interception, fumble recovery, big hit, anything to stop the momentum Randall has uh, so far in this ballgame. You had an interception a week ago from Isaiah Collins, who's going to go to Texas Tech after the season is over. You also had Jaden Bradford with a big fumble recovery to sway the momentum against Brenham. You need one here now, down 28 nothing to Randall. First down and 10 from the 28-yard line. They'll hand it off to the back. William Callis out of the gate, bouncing off some would-be tacklers, but Shiloh Jones got him to stop, but he'll stretch back forward for a gain of three on the play. The Hornets make the stop they need to there, but not before Cat William Callis was able to get up three yards. Callis is very exciting running back. I mean, Randall has a good one in Callis. I mean, he is very fleet-footed, very fast, and, man, he avoids contact really well. Second down and six. They give him four on that run. Hornets will jump. Flags fly in, but they blow the play dead here. It is going to be – well, they're pointing towards the Randall side, but they showed – encroachment here against Huntsville and that's going to move the ball up five yards and make it a very manageable second down and one. Well the one thing the Hornet defense doesn't need to do and that's give any favors over to Randall and there was one right there. You got the ball right in front of you man. Don't move until the ball moves. Actually moving up to the 36. Line to gain is the 38. Officially make it second down and two. They have it wrong on the scoreboard. It's second down and two here in the third. Randall leading 28 to nothing. Hornets show blitz here off the near, Fars near side line as they throw this one up. Caught in the flat around the 35-yard line up to the 40-yard line. Goes Richmond Randall. That's Jackson Montalongo with the catch and a first down for the Lions. Make some substitutions here. Will Richmond Randall, Cedric uh, McClintock, he will check out on this play. They'll form three receivers down here to the near sideline. Actually, they may go with four like they did towards the end of that last half of play. One spread out to the far sideline. That's Trey Scott that's in there as the far cornerback in place of Jeremiah Winfrey, who exited the game earlier tonight. Empty backfield here on first and 10 from the 40 as Skorbonic throws here to the sideline. It is caught at the 45, 46 yard line on that far side. That is Trey Scott that made the stop and that will bring up a second down and four, maybe make it three for Randall on the seven yard pickup. Yeah, nice pass over on the left side there by Randall. I mean, they're just steadily working their way downfield. I mean, nice pass here, nice run there, pick up a first down, do it all over again. And they're marching downfield. Nearing Hornet territory up to the their own 47-yard line, moving left to right across your radio dial. 10-10 to go in the third, 28-0 Lions. Skorbonic out of the shotgun, play action, throw here to the near sideline, caught around the 45, spinning off tacklers down to the 50 is Courtney Brown. And the far judge marks him shy. Now they move him up to the 50 right at the line the game they needed. First down and 10 for Richmond Randall. Skrabonic coming over on the short side of the field here with just kind of a little uh, hitch route. Just uh, picks up enough for the first down and move the change. Nicely done. 28-0 Randall, 9.38 to go in the third. Skrabonic out of the shotgun. He'll get the snap. The Hornets jump off sides again. Free play for Randall. Caught at the 25-yard line. Flags fly in. 
And the Randall receiver is still on his feet at the 15-yard line. The Hornets finally get him down. That's Jaden Osborne. So there are two flags on the field here, and I think this is both going to go against Huntsville. Those flags brought to you by a and Propane. We'll see here, that is a massive gain down to the 15, gain of 35 yards. Get the call here from the referee. They do call the offsides on the Hornets. That penalty is declined. The pass interference penalty against Huntsville is also declined. So it'll be, just be a first down anyway. They'll keep the catch there for Jaden Osborne, the 35-yard catch, and that will set up first and 10 for Randall at the 15. Well, Randall's doing what they did uh, <clears throat> in the first half. I mean, they're just, again, marching the ball downfield, keeping the defense out there, going to exhaust them out. And uh, if we don't do something offensively, it is going to be an ugly ball game. Trips receivers here make it a quad set there to the far sideline here for Skorbonik on first down. Trying to get Huntsville to jump. They wisely lay back this time. Skorbonik will reset here at the line of scrimmage. It is first and 10 from the 15. Trying to make this a five score game with 9.02 left to go in the third. Skorbonik with the play clock down to four. He'll send a receiver here in motion. His running back, William Callis. They got to hurry up here. Play clock is down to zero. Flag will fly in. That is going to be a delay of game put on the Randall Lions as they took too long to get that playoff. Well, that's a couple of delay games there by Randall here tonight and uh, kind of stalls, uh, it doesn't stall them, it slows them down a little bit um, and pushes them back five yards. But, uh, man, they've uh, they've been pretty tough so far in this ball game. So back them up five on the A&D propane delay of game penalty. First down and 15 for Randall. Line to gain for them is the five. Shotgun formation for Scrabonic. Gets the snap here, dropping back with three steps. Fires over the middle, and it's caught by Courtney Brown. Inside the 10, near that line to gain. Well, they, they spot it. They'll spot it at the 7, a gain of 13. And it'll bring up second down and two for Randall. Nice pass there by Randall. Skrobotic, he just throwing a little uh, post route wide open. Hits him right in the numbers. Nice completion. You got to give him credit. Randall has moved the ball well down the field. They started deep in their own territory around the 27-28 yard line, and they're knocking on the door of their fifth score of the ball game tonight. Empty backfield again, another quad set here, and they'll motion William Callis in to form that diamond set now on the far sideline. Skrabonic claps, gets the snap, throws on a screen pass to William Callis. Easy does it, cutting it back at the five. He is stopped by Shiloh Jones at the two. It's enough for another first down for Randall and a fresh set with first and goal to go. Nice tackle there by Shiloh Jones, just kind of putting the shoulder into the receiver, knocks him down short of the goal line. Nice play there by number 10, Shiloh Jones. Seven and a half to play here in the third quarter. Randall chewing up the clock here. First and goal from the two, Skrabonic. Nice to draw the Hornets off sides, and now they'll reset. He's got four receivers, two to each sideline, one back with him, Landon William Callis. The clock down to 12. Gets the snap, handed off to William Callis, cuts it easy, does it in the end zone, untouched, and that's another score for Richmond Randall to make it 34 to nothing, pending the PAT. It's been a tough one tonight for Huntsville, Brian. It has, and I wasn't expecting this like this tonight. I uh, thought we'd have a much more competitive ball game, but this is just uh, it's tough. Not been it. Christian Mongoya on for the point after try with 7.15 left to go in the third quarter. Montalongo is the holder awaiting the snap. Montalongo gets the snap here, the hold, and the kick is up. It is splitting the uprights and is good to make this a 35 a nothing ball game. Well, a deeper hole here for the Hornets as the offense will trot out for the first time tonight when we come back in 30 seconds on the Hornet Nation Broadcast Network. ATK Towing in Huntsville, located at 640 Avenue M, is like other towing companies, offering towing, lockouts, jump starts, road service, and recovery. But ATK Towing takes it to another level with their service that will get you home safe with your ride if you've celebrated a little too much. It's called Tipsy Tow. It's all about safety, your safety, and the safety of others. And if you need this service, you'll be glad ATK Towing got you home safely. Call them at 832-970-8040. KSAM, your home for Hornets football. Presented by Bill Vic Ford. 
back here in the third quarter, live from Richmond, Texas, in Trailer Stadium, 35 to nothing. Randall with another score. They drive it down 70 plus yards, and Huntsville finds themselves down in this shutout, currently being pitched by Randall by five scores, 35 to nothing. Huntsville's offense will get to take over here in just a few moments. See if they can generate something here on the offensive side of the ball and try to work their way back, but time is definitely not going to be their friend here down the stretch. Kick away here for Christian Mongolia back to the Huntsville Hornets. Two back deep to receive. Brent Carroll will be actually Peyton Pryor will be the one that will let that one sail into the end zone for a touchback. And the offense will take it out here to the 25 and that is where they set up shop. See if they can generate something here. Marcus Lewis back in at quarterback. A tough first half for him. He'll try to rebound in this second half. Well, the big guys up front need to give uh, Marcus uh, and Braylon Phillips a lot of help. They need to sustain these blocks a lot longer. They need to open up some running holes. They've just everybody's got to do, uh, you know, got to do a little bit more. They'll go with four receivers. Trips down here to the near sideline. Hunter Lorenz lines up in the middle of the two receivers of Savion Conte and Peyton Pryor. Lewis on first down and 10 from the 25 out of the shotgun. He'll get the snap. They'll hand it off to Braylon Phelps, trying to cut it upfield, but he's met instantly by the Randall front four. Coming off off the top of the pile, that was Michael Blake, the defensive lineman. It's a gain of one, second down and nine. Just a straight inside handoff, not a whole lot to it. Hornets will reset, same formation here, second down and nine. Randall working a four-man rush. Stacking six in the box. Second down and nine, Marcus Lewis out of the shotgun. Collapse, gets the snap, drops back with some time. Has a wide open Melton Green the third, but it's out of his reach. Incomplete. And that will bring up third down and nine for Huntsville. Well, you had the third over there on one-on-one -on -one covers wide open, and, um, and Marcus put a great throw in there. It's just a little bit high, but, man, it went right through the receiver's hands. you got to you gotta make that catch. Third down and nine now for Huntsville at the 26-yard line. 6.37 left to go in the third down. 35 to nothing here against Randall. Milton Green will go one-on-one -on -one again on the far sideline. Lewis gets the snap on third down, feels the pressure, spins out of it, and he's just going to run out of time. Sacked back here inside the 20-yard line to the 19, and Huntsville is held three and out. And on those certain kind of plays, you know, the offensive line, they're not able to hold their blocks for so much longer or else they'll get called for the holding penalty. So just unfortunate there. Randall was able to bring the pressure there and Huntsville will punt once more. Mejia on for another punt. Two back deep to receive here for the Randall Lions. Courtney Brown is one of them. And one of the hot receivers tonight as well for the Lions as Mejia gets the snap, punts this one away into the wind. It's dying around the 45-yard line. It takes a Randall roll. Roll out of bounds at the 40-yard line is where it will go. Short field of work here for the Randall Lions as the defense back out to work. You Brian? know, one of the things that the coaches are going to look at is Randall has, I don't know if they've started every drive uh, on a short field, but I'd say nine out of ten of their drives have been on a short field. You can't do that against a good football team. Here in a moment, we'll go to the third member of our crew, Luke Scott. He is back there on the sidelines for us this evening. Get an update from down there. It's it's a quiet sideline right now with Randall with the ball. First down and 10 from the Huntsville 40. Skorbonic lines up in the shotgun with three receivers. Gets the snap, handed off to Sean Smith, cutting this one upfield. But he is in a tackle for loss on the play. Nice play there by McCork Norman coming from his linebacker spot. A loss of one on the play to bring up second down and 11. Yeah, that really was. Uh, McCork Norman just kind of shot the gap, made a great uh, – Shoestring tackle there to drop him for that one-yard loss. Nice play there by Norman. Five and a half to play in the third quarter. 35 to nothing. Randall with the lead. Spurbonic again in the shotgun. Three receivers to the near sideline. Four-man rush for the Hornets with a cornerback showing blitz. As Scribana gets the snap, fakes here to the left side. It's tipped, and it's incomplete down to the turf. As McCorrick Norman nearly had an opportunity. Actually, Cole Schroeder had an opportunity to intercept that ball. It was tipped at the line of scrimmage there. I believe Kadarian easily got a hand on it. It renders it incomplete. Bring up a third down and 11 at the 41. Yeah, Randall's trying to set up a screen pass, and the Hornets read it pretty well. I think got a hand on the ball, and uh, man, that's good defense. Third down and 11 for Randall from the 41. Empty backfield here. They spread him out five wide. Four-man rush for the Hornets as Skorbonic claps. Trying to draw the Hornets offsides. They stay diligent. 
And with 5.14 left to go in the third, down 35 to nothing. Play clock is down to eight. Scorbonic barking out instructions here for this third down and long play. Play clock now down to three. Scorbonic, now he looks at the sideline. Now he's in trouble, and Randall is forced to burn one of their three timeouts. So a critical mistake there by the young quarterback, and that takes us to a timeout. We'll take it with him for 30 seconds here on the Hornet Nation Broadcast Network. Techspress Urgent Care Clinic in Huntsville would like to help keep your family and friends safe and prevent the spread of viruses. They are a walk-in clinic and offer quick, efficient flu and strep treatment. Techspress Urgent Care Clinic offers a variety of procedures, open seven days a week. Check their website at techspressurgentcare.com and visit them on Facebook. That's Techspress Urgent Care Clinic, located at 193 I-45 South, near Bahama Bucks and Buffalo Wild Wings in Huntsville. Hi, I'm varsity linebacker Trayvon Johnson, number 23, and you're listening to Huntsville Hornets on 101.7 K-Sound. Stingham Hornets. 5-14 remaining in the third quarter. It's 35 to nothing. Randall with the lead over Huntsville on the Hornet Nation Broadcast Network. I'm Carlos Zimmerman. Alongside of me is Brian Adams, live from the Pinnacle Realty Advisors Broadcast booth. Coming out of that timeout by Randall, they have two remaining. Huntsville with all three. Hornet defense trying to make a stand here with not much time left to go in the third quarter, trying to make a stop of the Lions. The Lions have only punted once tonight, so let's see if the Hornets can make a stop. Same formation here as we had before the timeout with five wide receivers. Scorbonic gets the snap alone in the backfield, but we have whistles here, and a false start appears to be the call against the Randall Lions, and that'll back them up another five. They're going to call that one on Jaden Osborne, one of the wide receivers spread out wide to the far sideline. That's a big break there for the Hornet defense. I mean, keep pushing them back like that. The line to gain is the, the Hornet 30, and they're on the Randall 49? Uh, 46. 46. The yeah. Huntsville 46. So it's third down and 16. So secondary's got to be careful here around the boundaries, around that 30-yard line to keep them from getting that first down. And Huntsville down 35 to nothing, trying to make a stand here with the defense. Third down and 16. They'll motion out of the backfield here, and they'll throw here to the near sideline to Courtney Brown at the 45-yard line. They spin him down around the 38. That is Hezekiah Johnson, I believe, coming with the tackle there. He went down earlier in the ballgame, so good to see him backing up. That'll bring up fourth down and nine for Randall with about 4.55 left to go in the third, and I believe, are they going to leave the offense out here on this on this, uh, third, on this this third, fourth down? It looks that way. Yeah. I mean, with a 35-0 lead, why not? Right? Well, you got to think about this. They may try to draw the Hornets off sides. They've done that oddly well tonight. So Huntsville's got to be disciplined here on this front line. It's fourth down and nine for Randall. Hornets do not jump. So now they will reset the offense here with 10 on the play clock. I'd be surprised. They may just take a delay of game here to try and give their punter just a little bit more room. No, they're going to run a play here. Fourth down and nine. Here comes the pressure of the Hornets. It's caught at the 35-yard line, but Shiloh Jones will not allow him to get to the line again at the 32. There's a bright spot for the Hornet defense. Turnover on downs by Randall, and here comes the Hornet offense. Very nicely done by Shiloh Jones. I mean, stayed at home at his Mike linebacker spot and read the pass perfectly. Drops the runner short of the first down. Change uh, the Hornet offense will be now be coming on the field. So after the turnover on downs, the ball will be spotted at the 32-yard line. That'll set up first down and 10 for Huntsville. They move right to left across your radio dial with 4.15 left to go here in the third. Marcus Lewis in the shotgun with four receivers. Trips to the near side, or to the far side. Lewis will hand it off here to the back. Braylon Phelps trying to gain the edge, cuts it back as he saw a hole open up, but was only able to get it back to the line of scrimmage at the 32. No gain, second and 10. You, know, you like the downhill vision that Braylon Phelps has. He does a good job seeing the holes. It's just by the time he's able to hit through those holes, they're clogged up, and that's why you miss Trayshawn Brown. He's got a little bit more of an explosive second step, but Braylon Phelps still trying to do a great job to service this offense in his own right. They gave him one on the play. They'll give him to the 33 to bring up second down and nine. And clock moving three and a half to play as Lewis gets the snap. They'll hand it off again to Braylon Phelps, trying to spin forward. The defender for Randall was actually able to spin him just a little bit forward to give him another gain of one on the play, trying to see who that was coming off the top of the pile. That was uh, Tayshawn Williams that made the stop. That'll bring up a third down and seven for the Huntsville Hornets at the 35 in their own territory. Well, this is a big third down here for the Hornets, you know, to try to get them some momentum. You don't need, you don't need to throw it downfield. You just need to get the first down. 
high percentage play. Third down and seven from the 35. Line to gain is the 42. Randall shows blitz. Lewis looking to pass. Throws here to the near sideline. Gets it to Milton Green, the third. No, it slips out at the last second. Had him right in his hands at the 30, and Milton Green, the third, he knew it. Fourth down, Huntsville will have to punt. Man, that was a good ball. I mean, one-on-one -on -one coverage down here on the near side. Milton Green, the third, beats his man. The ball is up. He comes down with it. It just can't hang on to it. I think, mm. I think as he was trying to transition it to his chest, it popped on his chest, and that's how it popped out. So an unlucky break for the Hornets. That would have been a big game, the biggest one of the night. And it's really been the tail of the tape of how it's gone tonight for the, the Hornets. So Mejia on to punt. Two back deep to receive for Randall. Now they're going to run a fake here with Hunter Lorenz taking this one here to the near sideline, to the 35, to the 40. He's got the first down across the 45. How about that for the MVP from a week ago? Hunter Lorenz to convert it on fourth down, and they'll bring the offense back out there. What a great play there by Hunter Lorenz, man. He is such a cool, <laughs> such a cool guy. We had him on the coaches' show Monday night, and, uh, man, he picks up a first down for the Hornets on a fake punt. Nicely done. Yeah, very nicely done as Mejia. I was wondering, what's he doing? He's running to the sideline here. Well, they go to the back of tricks, and it works for the Huntsville Hornets. Up to the 47-yard line. Marcus Lewis will reset here with his offense, and they'll go four receivers. One back with them is Braylon Phelps with 2.25 left to go here in the third quarter of play. 35-0 Randall as Lewis gets the snap looking to pass on first down, but for him he is going to be sacked back around the 35-yard line as the offensive line just could not hold their blocks too much longer, and that'll back up the Hornets big on a big loss back to their own 36. You know, you got to also think about this, and, and, and you know, Marcus is a very talented athlete, make no mistake about it, right? But he's a sophomore. He's young. And he doesn't have a ton of experience. And, and, man, in some of these instances, when that pass rush is coming in, around, you've got to get rid of the football. And that, that's just something that uh, it'll come in time. It's just uh, not there yet. Second down and 20 for the Hornets now. Obvious passing situation as Lewis will get the snap rolling to his right. He'll take off and run with it. Spun around at the 40-yard line. Big, big hit there for Randall. I'll set up a third down and about, I'm trying to do the quick math here, third down and 17 after the modest gain of three. And we saw the long pass the last time. Just in and out of the hands of Milton Green the third. He will line up one-on-one -on -one here. If you're watching on the video stream, to your bottom of your screen, he'll go one-on-one -on -one here against Cam Richardson. Third down and 17 for the Hornets with a minute seven left in the third. Down by five scores. Lewis will throw again to Melton Green, the third. It's going to fall incomplete. Melton Green wants to say he was held, but it's out of his reach. Incomplete fourth down, and now Huntsville will have to punt. Well, and they ran the fake last time, so obviously you're punting this one away. Yep. Well, the good thing is, uh, at this point, it doesn't look like uh, Randall's going to get, you know, a short field. See if they can get some leg into this one here. Will Huntsville. And Randall's playing the no the no returner here, so Mejia can just put a huge leg into this one. Now we got whistles coming out. And Randall calls their second time out. As we'll keep it right here for the time being with 58 seconds left to go in the third. Let's thank more of our sponsors who made tonight's broadcast possible. Absolutely. This season of Huntsville Hornet Football is presented by Bill Fick Ford. No bull, just good deals. And Radio Mash, the 17th annual Radio Mash Toy and Food Drive, presented by Bill Fick Ford, is proud to sponsor Huntsville Hornet Football. And First Franklin Financial, helping our neighbors do life since 1941. And Nelson Amaya's Collision Center, honest work, quality service, and Northside Baptist Church, growing people in Christ to reach others for Christ. And the Hornets now, they will come back out here to punt from the 40 yard line with 58 seconds left to go in the third. It's 35 to nothing. Randall with the lead. Now they'll have two back deep to receive here. Mejia gets the snap from Shiloh Jones. He'll get this one off, punting this one here towards the far sideline, sailing through the air. And it'll take a Hornet bounce. And we'll roll inside the 25-yard line, one of the better punts on the night. That'll take it up to the 23, and that is where the Randall offense will set up shop, needing to go 77 yards. Hold the phone, though. We do have a flag down here around the 49. 
You know, that was a nice punt there by Mejia. He got that one to turn over, and that one is against the wind. Really nice punt by Joseph Mejia. We'll see if we get the call here, what the penalty will be. Well, they're going to call a personal foul. Not certain what it is, but it'll move the ball up here for Randall up to the 38-yard line. While well, we have the pause here, we're at the top of the hour, so let's pause 10 seconds for station identification on the Hornet Nation Broadcast Network. This is the Hornet Nation Broadcast Network, 101.7 KSAM Huntsville, and on the KSAM mobile app, Stingham Hornets. 44 seconds left to go here in the third quarter. Randall with the lead, 35 to nothing against Huntsville. Carlos Zimmerman and Brian Adams live from the Pinnacle Realty Advisors broadcast booth. Luke Scott down on the sidelines for us. After this next play, we'll go to him down there on the sidelines here in just a few moments. Back in at quarterback, Tyler Skorbonik. For a first down and 10 from the Randall 37. Line up with two receivers stacked on each side. He'll get the snap, handed off to Sean Smith, trying to cut this one here to the near sideline across the 40 down to the 41-yard line. Let's go to the third member of our crew, Luke Scott, down on the sidelines for us this evening. Luke, just a, just a tough night. Overall here for the Huntsville Hornets. Go back to play here. It's a second down play here from the 41-yard line. It will fall to the turf incomplete. Tentative receiver that time was Jackson Montalongo, and that will bring up a third down quickly here for Randall needing six. Number 22, Michael Blake there for the Hornets in on the coverage. Ball was thrown at the feet of number 11, Jackson Montalongo. And that'll set up the third down and six here for Randall. 16 seconds left to go in the third, leading 35-0. Hornets jump off sides for a moment. Well, the flag didn't come out here, so they'll throw this one up over the top, and it'll fall to the turf incomplete, looking to go the way that time of Mark St. Fort, one of his first targets on the night. Hornets brought some good coverage back there. No flag, so it's fourth down, and Randall will punt it away. Well, this will give uh, Cole Schroeder another opportunity. He hasn't had a whole lot of opportunities to return punts tonight because Randall has just been unstoppable offensively. But Cole Schroeder, man, he's exciting. He's got, uh, he can take it to the house. Now would be a good time. With eight seconds left to go in the third, Cole Schroeder, as you said, back deep to receive this punt here from Christian Munguia. Schroeder stands at his own 25-yard line. Snap is away here, and Munguia taking his time. Kadarian easily nearly being able to block that. Is It's not the best of punts here by Munguia, but go figure. It takes a Randall roll <laughs> right. inside the 35, and it'll roll out of bounds at the 31-yard line, and that is where the Hornets will take over on offense. And that is the end of the third quarter, so with... One quarter remaining, Randall with the lead, 35 to nothing. Things not looking good for Huntsville right now. They'll try to salvage this one out in the fourth quarter when we come back here on the Hornet Nation Broadcast Network. It's always game time at Gamers Grove, Huntsville's friendly local game store located at 1212 14th Street. Family owned and operated since 2012, Gamers Grove carries a wide range of tabletop games and accessories for everyone. Board games, card games, miniatures, and more. With a huge game room open for free casual gaming and exciting competitive events, Gamers Grove provides a friendly place where people can play games, make friends, and become a part of an ever-growing community. That's Gamers Grove, located at 1212 14th Street in Huntsville. Kubota products provide the horsepower, versatility, and dependability to get the job done right. But that doesn't mean you can cut corners on your regular routine maintenance. Keep your equipment running smooth by bringing your Kubota mower, subcompact tractor, or hay series tractors into Huntsville Truck and Tractor for a tune-up or oil change today. Call one of our experts for any questions about your Kubota products. Or stop by Huntsville Truck and Tractor today, conveniently located at 2124 Highway 30 East in Huntsville. Or call us at 936-291-8103 to keep your Kubota running strong. Hornet Pride lives on Kaysen. 
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, here on the Hornet Nation Broadcast Network, powered by KSAM Sports. Fourth and final quarter of play brought to you by Radio Mash, now underway. First play, Austin Taylor in at quarterback. It fell to the turf incomplete, looking to go the way of Josh Stanley. That'll set up second down and 10 from the 31. Taylor in the shotgun, gets the snap. They'll hand it off here to the back. Braylon Phelps trying to cut this one to the near sideline. Wow, what a man's run that time for Braylon Phelps as he run out of bounds near the line to gain at around the 37, 38 yard line. Where do they spot him? Not ah, just shy of that. To the 36. We'll make it a manageable third down and five for the Hornets. That was actually Austin Taylor kept that himself and took it around the left side. We'll see if the Hornet offense can turn another first down here. Third down and five. Line to gain is the 41. Taylor claps out of the gun, gets the snap. He'll roll here to his left with the pressure bearing down and then throws, and it will be. Oh, uh, wow, did they haul that one in? Did the Hornets haul that one in? Savion Conte there at the 50-yard line. He comes up with the football. A flag did fly in from the line judge, so this one may go the way of the Hornets. Indeed, it will. They're going to call pass interference against Randall. Well, Austin Taylor's rolling to his left and makes a nice throw. They're still trying to figure out what happened out there. And it was third down and five. Head coach Rodney Southern is getting word here from one of the line judges as well, trying to talk this one over. And it is pass interference, 15-yard penalty, and that'll move the Hornets up near Randall territory and keep the drive going on the Mocha Mocha attorneys at law first down. That'll move it all the way into Randall territory up to the 49-yard line. 11.42 left to go here in the Radio Mash fourth quarter. Randall with the lead, 35 to nothing. Austin Taylor. Out of the shotgun with three receivers. They'll get the snap, hand it off to Braylon Phelps, running this one to the near sideline with some space. Stiff arms a man at the 45-yard line, and he gets out of bounds. Another great run there for Braylon Phelps, up to the 44 and a gain of five. Yeah, nice handoff up the middle, and Braylon cuts it to the left. Nice, powerful run there by Braylon Phelps. And more importantly for the Hornets, it stops the clock, trying to keep this clock managed despite being down five scores. Trips receivers here to the near sideline. Josh Stanley in as one of the wide receivers. Good to see him out there on the field. Hunter Lorenz in the slot here to the near side. Taylor working out of the shotgun. Second down and about five from the Randall 44. He'll get the snap, looking to throw. Throws this one on a go route, but a little bit too strong that time from Austin Taylor. Intended receiver is Savion Conte. That's been the story tonight. Just a couple of over, just some overthrown balls from the QBs tonight for Huntsville, but that will set up third down. Yep, you know uh, both of them have had. Uh, you know that was the first kind of long pass there, Boston Taylor. But again, it sailed long. And you're right, that's kind of been the theme of the ball game. But just kind of over, overthrowing receivers, you got to give them a fighting chance. Third down and five for Huntsville from the Randall 44. Line to gain is the 39. Taylor out of the gun with three receivers. Has the snap, rolling right, four-man rush for Randall. Randall has some pressure. They find Peyton Pryor in the flat, makes a good move at the 35-yard line is where he goes down. And that is where enough for a Mocha Mocha turn. He's a lot first down, but we do have some extracurriculars going down here on the field. No flags did come out. Luckily, for either side, nothing will come out of this. He'll just keep the play going. Mocha Mocha turn. He's a lot first down to the 35. You know, you know the, the old adage goes, tempers, are, uh, tempers can get hot when there's so much on the line tonight. A number two seed in this district is what was up for grabs tonight. Huntsville currently holds it. Randall trying to get on the brink of taking it away, but a lot of time still to be played here in this Radio Mash fourth quarter with it being 35 to nothing. After the catch for Peyton Pryor, first and 10 from the 35, Austin Taylor. With trips receivers to the far sideline, and they're going to blow this one dead as the Hornets jumped a little bit too early. It's going to be a false start charge to Huntsville, and we'll back them up five. Now, the penalties haven't been keen, really, for the Hornets tonight either. Just some mental mistakes there, waiting for the ball. See if they can reset here on, second, on first down and 15. Somehow the Hornets need to put something on the board. They've got, they cannot come here and get blanked. That would just not bode well going into the playoffs. It's been a long time since Huntsville has been blanked. I think you have to go all the way back to last year against Lake Creek at home. 
the last time Huntsville was shut out. Trying to change that here. First and 15 from the 40. Taylor gets the snap. Handed off to Braylon Phelps. Trying to run this to the near sideline, but didn't get enough blocks. As that'll back up the Hornets even more yardage. Four yard loss on the play, and that'll bring up second down and even longer. Well, give credit to Randall's defense. I mean, they're playing just as hard and as good as the offense is for them tonight. It has been all Randall. It's just one of those tough games. That's why you play the game of football. You, you, whoever comes out of the gate hot, and tonight that was Randall. 10-25 left to go here in the fourth. 35-0 Lions over the Hornets. Huntsville will spread them out here. Four receivers. Trips to the near side. Hunter Lorenz lines up in the slot. From the 44, Taylor gets the snap. Rolling here to his right. Steps into the throw, and just a little bit too strong. That time to his intended target, Peyton Fryer, as he fell to the turf, would have gotten a good chunk of that yardage back, but that'll set up third down and 20 here for Huntsville. Well, Austin's going to have to go vertical with the ball here. He's got to at least get to the 25. So that's going to be a nice little pass. But they need to go vertical with it. Update from the Fort Ben Marshall game. They're all over Dayton, 41-7 to as of this moment. Third down and 20 for Huntsville, 10-08 left to go in the fourth. Line to gain is the Randall 25. Austin Taylor gets the snap, four-man rush for the line, steps into the pocket, throws, and it's just behind his intended target in Josh Stanley. Trying to sneak it in there into a very tight window there was Austin Taylor, and that will bring up fourth down, and we'll see if they're, well, at this point in the ballgame, it's four-down territory. We'll see what Huntsville... Try and do here, trying to convert a huge play here on fourth down. He'll line up out there, Will Austin Taylor, with four receivers. You got Josh Stanley, Peyton Pryor, and Hunter Lorenz to the near side. Savion Conte's one on one to the far side. Braylon Phelps, the running back, he'll motion out of the backfield, form a five wide out set. On fourth down and 20 from the 44. Taylor throws off his back leg, trying to get it to Hunter Lorenz, just in and out of the reach of his hands. It falls incomplete, just thrown a little bit behind him, back in coverage. For Randall was Ryan Mallory, and that will bring up a turnover on downs, and the Randall offense will take over. Well, we uh, you bring Austin Taylor in and hope for a spark, and there was a tiny one, but just not enough. And again, uh, turnover on downs. It's been all Richmond Randall here tonight. And it's just one of those things, Brian. You know, Randall... Let's be honest, they came to play. They knew what was on the line here tonight. They'll have an opportunity to host a playoff game next week. Got to give them credit in the way they have played tonight. Leo Garza now in at quarterback here for Richmond Randall. 9.57 left to go here in the fourth. He'll hand it off here to the back, trying to cut it upfield around the 46-yard line. That was Sincere Timpson on the run. And that will bring up second down and eight for Randall. So some of these younger guys will get an opportunity here for the Lions to get some action here in this regular season finale. I want to make a correction to an earlier note I made. The last time Huntsville was shut out, it was in the playoffs a year ago against Fort Bend Marshall. So yeah, they haven't been shut out at all this season. That's how impressive the team has been as a whole. It just hasn't been their night. Second down and eight from the 46-yard line. Garza claps, gets the snap out of the shotgun, handed off again to Timpson, trying to work this one to the far sideline. Hornets able to swarm to him at the 29-yard line, trying to see who that is coming off the top of the pile here in a moment once he breaks the crowd of jerseys. Trying to get that number to turn around here. That was Jawan Giddens that made the stop. Third down and five coming up for Randall. Yeah, Randall just a uh, simple handoff over the right side, picks up a yard or two on the carry. Again, they're just eating that clock up, just running the ball. 8.50 left to go here in the fourth. Leo Garza in at quarterback here for Randall, if you're just joining us. Hornet defense, ever since giving up that opening drive touchdown to Randall, has done a good job shutting them down. The offense just has had not an answer for the Randall defense this evening. Third down from the 49-yard line. Sincere Tipson in at running back here with three receivers as Garza gets the snap, but not before the third Delay of game penalty that will be charged to Randall tonight. They have had their struggles with that this evening. That'll back them up five and make this a harder third down for the Lions. Yeah, they really have. Here, uh, in this, as this game uh, continues, it looks like Randall's getting a little bit sloppier in their play. But they have such a lead that, uh, you know, that five-yard penalty is not going to hurt them a whole lot. 
I'll back him up to the 44-yard line, bring up third down and 10. Garza in the shotgun once again. Trips two receivers here to the near side with a tight end offset. Garza gets the snap. They'll just hand it off to the back. And a good stop there at the line of scrimmage for Fred Aladelli, one of the future stars of that defensive line. He's had a great season as a sophomore. Makes that tackle at the 46-yard line. It's fourth down, and Randall will punt it away. You know, you just uh, brought up kind of a good point, you know, talking about him being a sophomore. And you think about the Hornets as a whole, they are a very young team. And their future is really, really bright. But, uh, man, they got some of these young guys, man, juniors, sophomores out there playing, and there's a lot of them. Man, those guys get another year under their belt. They are going to be dangerous. Christian Mongoya on to punt this one away. Cole Schroeder back deep to receive at his 21-yard line. Snap away here to Mongoya. Puts this one up, and that ball just went vertically straight up. <laughs> but go figure. It takes another Randall bounce. Inside the 35 to the 34 is where it is touched down. And the Hornet offense will retake the field. Brian, do we have more sponsors to thank here this evening? We do. We have a few left here. We got Advantage Specialties. Advantage Specialties is your one stop shop for business promotional needs in Huntsville and Murray Insurance and Financial Services, an agency you can trust in University Heights Baptist Church, cultivating people who make Jesus known through the lives we live and in the conversations that we have. Thank you very much to all our great sponsors, whether it is a win or a loss, for their support of Huntsville Hornet Athletics. 7.20 left to go in the fourth in this quarter brought to you by Radio Mash as Taylor gets the snap on first down, throws, and that is caught at the 40-yard line by Peyton Pryor, and he is spun down at the 43. It's a gain of nine on the catch there for Peyton Pryor, and that'll bring up second down and one for Huntsville. That really was. Peyton Pryor's really come along uh, and doing really well as a wide receiver for the Hornets. And man, each game he gets better and better. And he's had a pretty good uh, little solid game here tonight. That'll set up second down and one for the Huntsville Hornets. Three receivers here to the near side, to the short side of the field. One way out to the far side. Taylor Claps gets the snap, handed off to Braylon Phelps. Running that one to the far side of the field, cutting up across defenders, across the 45, down to the 49-yard line. And that will be a Mocha Mocha turning sell off. First down for the Hornets. Yeah, nice run over the left side there by Phelps. Man, very powerful runner. Takes it. Looks like he was going to try to take the edge. Cuts it up inside. Great move. Picks up the first down, nice run. Nearing Randall territory up to the 49. Huntsville been held scoreless tonight, have not had that MRC Creekside touchdown go their way. Down 35 to nothing, 6.25 left to go in the fourth. Taylor working out of the shotgun with four receivers. He'll come set now. Claps gets the snap, drops back with three steps, looks to throw over the middle, has Hunter Lorenz wide open at the 30-yard line and spun down at the 26-yard line. That time by Sebastian Garza, great pass from Taylor down to Lorenz. First down and 10, Amoka Moka turns at law. First down, a gain of 20-plus. A nice uh, route there by Hunter Lorenz, just runs a seam route up the hash marks. Austin Taylor hits him nice and uh, good completion, nice first down. To the 33-yard line of Randall, first down and 10. Taylor out of the gun, gets the snap, rolling here to his left. Now comes set at the line of scrimmage, sees the hole in front of him across to the 25, cutting it back here, gets a good block from Sabian Conte to the 20, and out of bounds at the 15-yard line. Austin Taylor making moves with his legs down to the 15, and another Mocha Mocha turns it law first down. Nice play there by, uh, by Austin Taylor. He drops back, trying to look downfield to find an open receiver. Nobody there, takes it himself, gets a great block, picks up the first down, gets it out of bounds, stops the clock, nice play. Inside that Murray Insurance and Financial Services red zone to the 15-yard line go the Hornets. First down and 10. 5.48 left to go here in the fourth. Just to trying to avoid getting shut out. Taylor wasn't quite ready for that snap. It's a broken play here. He'll just be forced to tuck it and run. He gets it back to the line of scrimmage at the 15. That'll set up a second down and 10. And the clock moving down here. Huntsville just trying. They unfortunately won't come away with the win tonight, but just trying to avoid being shut out being able to score in every ball game that they've had this year. Trips receivers here to the near sideline. Four-man rush for Randall. On second down and 10 from the 14, they, from the 15, as Taylor gets the snap out of the gun, looking to throw here to the back corner of the end zone, and it is hauled in. What are they going to say? It's a touchdown for Huntsville, Savion Conte. Nice pass by Austin to Conte in the corner. Lays it up over the uh, defender right into Conte's hands. Good catch, good pass. That's an MRC Creekside touchdown, so the Hornets avoid the shutout tonight with about 5.08 left to go here in the Radio Mash fourth quarter, and uh, Joseph Mejia is on for the Nelson Amaya's Collision Center extra point. 
Ana Lorenz will be his holder. Gonna make this a 35-7 game. Wind at his back. Half away, the hold down by Lorenz and the kick by Mejia. Is no good. Misses off to the right. But Huntsville will avoid leaving a goose egg on the board tonight. Down 35 to 6 with 508 left to go in the fourth. Well, hang on here. We do have flags. This refereeing crew will talk things over for a brief moment. Try and get everything sorted out. After the play was over, we had fouls by both teams. No, Unsportsmanlike right conduct, number 28 of the op of the defense, and number 30 of the offense. Well, offsetting penalties. Okay. Well, and you know, you know, what's odd about that, Brian? I don't have a thirty. I don't have a uh, twenty-eight on Randall's roster. I don't have a thirty on Huntsville's roster. Well, there you go. So <laughs> it's been that either, kind of night. Yeah, <laughs> yeah ain't that the truth? <laughs> Five oh eight left to go here in the Radio Mash fourth quarter. Huntsville avoids the shutout tonight. They're down thirty-five to six. They'll get ready for the Diana K Barnes State Farm Insurance kickoff. You know, I, I tell you, Carlos, just uh, my own opinion about uh, the Hornets putting points on the board, you know, obviously in a losing effort, but nonetheless, putting points on the board is a big deal. And I think by doing that, that's going to kind of get them, you know, in a better frame of mind, as it in, you know, unless they had come back with zero points, that would have been devastating. But putting points on the board, I think mentally is going to help the Hornets uh, into next week. You know, I always say, Brian, there's a silver lining in everything, and you're able to, and despite – you're going to take the loss tonight. Take that for what it is. Right. But you get points on the board. It gives you still that confidence. And, you know, as we get ready for the Diana Keybarn State Farm Insurance kickoff, this is not a bad team. This is a very good team. Very good team. That Huntsville has this season. They've performed very well. There's a couple games in non-district that you would hope would have went your way, but this team is better than the record shows. An onside kick try here for Joseph Mejia. Does not get that kick up that it needed to at the 48, and Randall will recover it there, and that's where they'll set up shop. But like we said, this is not a bad team that Huntsville has rolled out week in and week out. This is one of the best teams that we have seen in recent years for the Hornets. You know, and it's a very young team in, in the grand scheme of things as well. You're bringing back a mess load of players, mess load of starters on both sides of the ball. So watch out in 2024. This team's very good, but this season's not over by any stretch. You've got a playoff game to play next week, albeit being on the road. Well, we saw how they played last week against Brenham. And that, man, that was a just an all-out shootout. And uh, Hornets came out on top. So you're right. They, they are a much better team than they've showed here tonight. Leo Garza in a quarterback here for Randall. Get the snap on first down. Hand it off to the back here. This is Timpson running this one to the near sideline. Gets the edge around the 50. But a Hornets got him wrapped up by the ankle before they finally finish him off with Jaden Bradford. Great job there with the sophomore, Brent Carroll. That's one of those guys that's a starter this year for the Hornets and is going to be coming back next season. And he has been stellar for this Hornet defense in the secondary. And that'll set up a second down and seven for Randall into Hornet territory to the 49-yard line. Randall will continue to chew up the clock with 4.39 left to go here in the Radio Mash fourth quarter. Garza, who was the starter a year ago for Randall, he'll line up here with three receivers, two to the far sideline. He'll get the snap on second down, hand it off once again to Timpson, trying to slip across would-be tacklers, but the Hornets able to swarm to him at the 40, let's see, the 47-yard line. It's a gain of two, and I'll bring up third down for Randall. Yep, just a handoff up the middle. Randall's just running the ball, run the clock out, and uh, pick up a yard or two on the carry, brings up third and... I don't know what, five? Uh, roughly about, uh, yeah, that'll be third down and five coming up here. Final between Fort Bend Marshall and Dayton. Fort Bend Marshall knocks off the Broncos tonight, 41-7. to seven. So for Marshall, they will remain in third place in District 9. But they will face Richmond Randall coming up next week back here at Trailer Stadium. That should be an incredible ball game based on what we've seen from the Lions tonight. Third down and five. Garza working out of the shotgun with three receivers and a tight end offset. One back with him again, Sincere Timpson. Tight end will go in motion across the line. He'll get the snap. Will Garza handed back off to Timpson, trying to cut it here to the far sideline. Hornets pushing him backwards. Flag flying in, I believe, here from the far sideline. It's a loss on the plate for Timpson. So either way, it's fourth down for Randall with 3.29 left to go here in the fourth. But we do have a flag on the play brought to you by a and Propane. We'll see who the flag will be charged to on this one. 
Well, he's declined. It's holding on Randall, and that'll set up the fourth down play. Want to let you know, coming up here on the AB Squared Self Storage Facility post game wrap up, we will get a word from head coach Rodney Southern with Luke Scott down on the sidelines for us. Been doing a great job getting everything to us here into the box here on what's happening on the Hornet sideline tonight. We'll recap tonight's game. We'll have a player of the game for you brought to you by McWilliams and Sons Heating, Cooling, and Plumbing. And we'll look ahead to the playoff matchup next week, which the Hornets do not have an opponent for solidified just yet. So that's coming up on the AB Squared Self Storage Facility post game wrap up. Munguya on to punt this one away. Gets this one off. That's Cole Schroeder back deep to take this punt, and it takes a Huntsville bounce up to the 32-yard line, and that is where the Hornet offense will take over with 3-11 left to go here in the Radio Mash fourth quarter. Carlos Vitari, I got one more I want to read real you quick. You got it. <clears throat> Huntsville Independent School District, focus for our children's unlimited success. And that's in the grand scheme. That's what it's all about. It's all that's about right. these kids. That's right. It's all about here and what it, what it is in high school football. You continue to build character for these young men as whenever they leave high school, they embark on their own journeys, and that's what it's all about here. With 3.11 left to go in the fourth, Austin Taylor sets up the offense here. First and 10 from the 32. Out of the shotgun with four receivers. Four-man rush for Randall. They do show blitz as well. Taylor claps, gets the snap, drops back, looking to pass on a go route here to the near sideline. Has Savion Conte at the 35-yard line. What a grab there, outstretching the arms there for Conte. And the Mocha Mocha turns at law first down. Nice pass there by Austin Taylor to Conte. Conte is just over here on the near sidelines, runs a go route. Austin Taylor lays it up beautifully right into his arms. Big pass play, nice first down. So Huntsville goes from their own 32 to the Randall 32-yard line. Good gain on the play of 36 yards, first and 10. Taylor once again in the shotgun, gets the snap with trips receivers to the far sideline, feels the pressure, throws, caught. Hunter Lorenz at around the 31-yard line where he is forced out of bounds by Sherrod Rebus, and that will bring up a second down for the Hornets. With 2.36 left to go in the fourth. Nice catch over there on the far sidelines by Hunter Lorenz. He's had a couple of nice balls here tonight. First year on varsity level as well, much like a... Some of these other receivers that are out there for the Hornets. Second down and nine after the one-yard pickup. Taylor claps, gets the snap, throws up over the top. A little too tall that time for his intended target, Hunter Lorenz. Stops the clock at 2.33. Down 35-6 to six here in the Radio Mash fourth quarter. Third down and nine coming up for Huntsville. Man, I know Taylor would love to have that ball back because, man, it looked like Hunter Lorenz was wide open. And that ball just sailed on him. Again, that's happened uh, throughout the night for these Hornet quarterbacks. And it is cold out there, so it, not, it is hard to catch, but it's also hard to throw with the temps dipping down into the 50s here this evening. Third down and nine for the Huntsville Hornets. Taylor out of the shotgun. Randall shows blitz. He'll get the snap. Rolling left. Now comes set. Fires this one up over the top. Looking back to Conte. Just a little out of his reach that time. Right on the money, but just a touch too far. Fourth down and nine. Huntsville will obviously go for it here, but 226 left to go in the fourth. Yeah, I think Taylor, if he'd had that ball go a little bit more towards the sidelines, uh, I think he would probably came up with that catch, but it, it drifted over to the center. And, man, that is such a difficult thing to try to do is catch that ball over the top of your head. From the 31-yard line, fourth down and nine here for the Hornets. Possibly their final play here of the night, Austin Taylor. Claps, gets the snap on fourth down. They send an all-out blitz, throwing here to the far sideline, and it falls to the turf incomplete, trying to go once again the way of Sabian Conte. It'll be going incomplete, turnover on downs, and with 2.21 left to go here in the fourth, Randall will start working their way into victory formation. And a tough pill to swallow tonight for the Huntsville Hornets. Just couldn't get anything going offensively throughout this entire ball game, and the Hornet defense trying to do all they could Try and keep him in the game. Randall brought it tonight, though. you got to give the Lions credit. They played with a lot of gumption. This is a very young program that Randall's put together in such a short amount of time. And they'll be rolling in here to host a playoff game next week at Trailer Stadium against Fort Ben Marshall. Man, is this place going to be packed out or what with Fort Ben Marshall not too far away here from Richmond? Final place here for the ball game. First and 10 from the 31-yard line for Richmond Randall. Leo Garza lines up with the shotgun, trips receivers to the far sideline. Garza looking around here. Clock is stopped, so might as well just snap the ball here with a four-man rush coming for the Hornets. Garza gets the snap, handed off here to Sincere Timpson, working this one to the far sideline, cuts it upfield around the 39-yard line before the Hornets were able to swarm to him. 
That, I believe, coming off the top of that pile. Kenneth Scott the third, and that'll bring up second down for Randall. A nice little run around the right side by Randall. They've been doing it all night. And another good run there on uh, first down. Now set up second down and three for Randall. Clock will move inside two minutes here in the Radio Mash fourth quarter to play. For the seven-yard pickup there by Sincere Timpson. Get the play clock, or actually the game clock, all the way down to about a minute and a half before they snap this football. Same formation. Randall moving right to left across your radio dial. Garza claps, gets the snap. Hornets bring the blitz. Timpson did not read it, and the Hornets are going to get a big tackle for loss here inside the 35. Is the great stuff there from the sophomore defensive lineman, Isaiah Lewis, in on the tackle for loss, along with Gage Doris. And I want to send a congratulations to Gage Doris. He just committed to play baseball at Houston Christian University very recently. So congratulations to Gage. Getting to play football this year as well. Also in on that stop to bring up a third down for Randall. Lock will move inside a minute left to go here in the fourth. And coming up here on the AB Squared self Storage Facility postgame wrap-up, we'll hear from head coach Rodney Southern in this tough loss tonight. The Hornets avoid the shutout. They will fall tonight, unfortunately, 35-6. And here we go, one of the final plays. Play clock down to four. Garza gets the snap, handed off to Timpson, running this one to the far sideline, trying to get it around to the 40-yard line. That is where they will touch him down. And with 39 seconds left, the play clock has not started. They will wind this one all the way to a finish tonight. So unfortunately for the Huntsville Hornets, they will fall to 5-5 five and five overall on the season. They will finish the district season 4-2, and two, but man... They played their hearts out really all season long and through tonight's ball game to put themselves into position one step higher than they were a year ago as the four seed out of District 10 5A Division 2. They will be the three seed into the postseason. Their opponent to be determined between Nederland and Texas City. We'll have to wait till tomorrow night to find out how that game will transpire. Your final tonight, Randall wins 35 to 6. They are the two seed for District 10 5A Division 2. They will get Fort Ben Marshall coming up next week here at Trailer Stadium. AB Squared self-storage facility post-game wrap-up comes your way next here on the Hornet Nation Broadcast Network. The 17th Annual Radio MASH, presented by Bill Fick Ford, is December 6th and 7th at the HEB parking lot in Huntsville. Will you please answer the call once again and give generously? Your donation of toys, food, pet supplies, and gift cards stay in Huntsville and Walker County to aid local families and children. You make a smile happen. Thank you. From all of us at 101.7 KSAM. Exceeding all expectations for three generations, you can call us day or night. McWilliams Heating, Cooling, and Plumbing provides service you can salute from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. seven days a week with no overtime fees. Check our current air conditioning and plumbing service offers and schedule online today at callmcwilliams.com. License TLCLA 2150. All of East Texas knows when your AC goes, we got the best service round by far. We're not comfortable until you are. Proud supporter of Huntsville High School, Danny Doherty State Farm in Huntsville covers all your business, auto, home, life, and renter's insurance needs. Call or stop by the office and get a quote today. They will find the right policy to fit your needs. Call Danny Doherty State Farm Insurance at 936-295-2067. That's 936-295-2067. Or visit them at 2914 Montgomery Road in Huntsville. Shouldn't you be getting ready for winter? At McGilbury Mechanical, we are, and we want to help you prepare too. The first place to start is in the attic. With energy costs rising, conserving the energy you have goes hand in hand with reducing the amount you use. In most homes, up to 40% of the home's energy escapes through the attic. By increasing the insulation in your attic, you could save up to 20% on your air conditioning costs. That's why McGilbury Mechanical will come to your home and give a free estimate on what it will take to get your home well insulated. Call McGilbury Mechanical at 936 291 2640 at McGilbury Mechanical. We care about your comfort. This is BJ McMichael, and I am a proud 1993 Hornet graduate and 1998 Bearcat graduate. I am also the Minister of Students and Outreach at University Heights Baptist Church. Here at University Heights, we are connected to Christ and the community. We also offer small groups and activities for every age and stage. Be sure to check us out online at uhbc.net or download our UHBC app in the Apple or Android store today. Stingham Hornets. 
Courage, integrity, perseverance, commitment, not just the job. This is a career with a purpose. The Texas Department of Criminal Justice is hiring correctional officers now. Full and part-time positions available, no experience required, paid training, great health care and retirement, and opportunities for base pay increases with continued service in the first year. Apply now at tdcj.texas.gov slash co. That's tdcj.texas.gov slash co. Serve Texas with respect. Wiesner Chevrolet in Huntsville has immediate openings for service technicians, body shop, and sales consultants. Service technicians that are ASC certified are preferred but not required. Looking for a great career? Wiesner Huntsville is looking for service technicians, body shop, and sales consultants, and complete benefits are included. So go by today and apply. Take exit 116 on I-45 North and go past 11th Street in Huntsville. Wiesner Chevrolet in Huntsville is hiring. The Huntsville Hornets postgame show is brought to you by AB Squared Self Storage. With the game recap, here's Brian Adams and the voice of the Hornets, Carlos Zimmerman. Back here at Trailer Stadium in Richmond, Texas. Your final tonight, Randall wins 35-6. to Welcome to the AB Squared Self Storage Facility postgame wrap-up. We're going to send it right down to the field. Luke Scott standing by with head coach Rodney Southern. Thanks, Carlos. Here with head coach Ronnie Southern. Coach, uh, not much to really take away from, I would think. Just kind of a turn the page and on to, uh, to the week one in the playoffs. Coach, just kind of your thoughts on this tonight's game. Well, it's a lot like it was at halftime. We, we didn't get enough first downs. They, they control the line of scrimmage, especially defensively. And when that happens and you can't run the ball and keep them off of you, the score is going to look like that. We, uh, we didn't get enough first downs. Uh, we t I thought we tackled decent, uh, but number one's the real deal, and we knew that coming in, and they're a good football team, and they beat us tonight. Uh, Coach, you know, on to week one, most likely against a, a really good Texas City or a familiar foe from last year and previous years in Fort Bend Marshall. Uh, kind of talk about the schedule here coming up this next week and what you can see uh, out of those two teams. Well, Fort Bend Marshall's playing tonight, so, you know, and they played Dayton, which you would think they will win that game. And then uh, the the deal now will be if Nederland can beat Texas City or if Texas City beats Nederland, it'll be Texas City Friday night at Texas City uh, if something crazy happens because their district goes tiebreaker, then to points, and then they stay with points. So there is a crazy scenario where Nederland could finish second or fourth and something but odds are it's going to be texas city at texas city friday night at and it'll be at seven o'clock all right coach appreciate your time and best of luck here for the next week all right carlos back to you Thank you very much, Luke, down there on the sidelines for us talking with head coach Rodney Southern. Well, you got that message right there. Uh, we will wait on the winner of Texas City and Nederland. Uh, again, it's going to come down to points differential. Ultimately, if Nederland comes away with a victory, it depends on how that margin of victory for Nederland over Texas City will be. So we will wait and see what will be the case. As we continue on here on the AB Squared Self Storage Facility postgame wrap up, I'm Carlos Zimmerman alongside Brian Adams live here from the Pinnacle Realty Advisors broadcast booth. Well, Rodney Southern summed it up there perfectly. Coach just wasn't, they didn't, the Huntsville didn't make enough plays tonight. Randall made more plays tonight, and that was ultimately the difference in the ballgame. Yeah, 100 percent. And it was, uh, you know, they started from the word go. And, you know, the Hornets had that opportunity receiving the kickoff from the, the very beginning of the ballgame and didn't do anything with it. And it was Randall from then on. You know, there are a couple of bright spots, um, as Coach Southern said. The, the tackling wasn't too bad tonight. <clears throat> Offensively, you know, they got a lot of work to do. And, and you've, you've got to open up some running lanes. And, you know, that's a battle between the big guys. And our big guys uh, got handled tonight. And, we, you know, that hadn't happened very much all year long. But it did tonight. And they'll regroup. And they'll come back. And they'll have a great week of practice. And we'll be uh, playing ball next week. Absolutely. Unfortunately, we'll be on the road for Huntsville, likely against either Texas City or Nederland. Again, we want you to stay tuned to our social media on KSAM Sports on Facebook and as well on Twitter at KSAM1017. So keep your eyes updated for that whenever we get the information disseminated to us as to how the playoff game will be, where it will be played, when it will be played. Likely, like Rodney Southern said, on Friday night at 7 o'clock next week. Just depends on who the opponent will be. We got your player of the ball game tonight brought to you by McWilliams and Sons heating, cooling, and plumbing. We're going to give it to Savion Conte because he had the lone touchdown score of the ball game on that throw from Austin Taylor down the stretch of the ball game and really had a lot of great open looks all night long. So our player of the ball game tonight goes to Savion Conte. 
Yeah, I agree. I mean, he uh, he was the uh, really truly the one standout offensively. Um, Braylon Phelps had some good runs, some hard, tough runs. I mean, he is a, a just like I said, a north and south runner. Um, but man, he's got to get blocks too. I mean, he can't do it all himself, and uh, it's got to be a total team effort. And it just didn't come through that way tonight. Unfortunately, did not. But Huntsville, they will look to bounce back next week in the postseason. Again, your player of the ball game brought to you by McWilliams and Sons Heating, Cooling, and Plumbing. Savion Conte, number 14, the wide receiver for the Huntsville Hornets. We're going to step aside and take a break. We've got to get back on the road to Huntsville. So our final segment is coming up next. We'll look ahead to next week for the Huntsville Hornets. They're in the postseason. It's the, like I said, there's a silver lining in everything, but we'll see how it pans out next week. We'll talk more about that when we come back on the AB Squared Self Storage Facility postgame wrap up after this on the Hornet Nation Broadcast Network. AB Squared Self Storage is your local go to self storage facility that can help give you the extra space you need, big or small. From non climate and climate controlled storage to parking spaces for your car, boat, trailer, and RV, they have it all. AB Squared Self Storage has 24 hour computerized gate access, around the clock security camera monitoring, no long term lease commitment, and convenient payment options. Give them a call today at 936 755 5000 or reserve your space online at www.ab2selfstorage.com. Back here in Richmond, Texas on the Hornet Nation Broadcast Network powered by KSAM Sports here at Trailer Stadium. Again, your final Randall wins tonight, 35-6 to for Randall. It's jubilation for them. They are getting the two seed out of District 10, 5A Division 2, so you got to tip your hat to him. They played, to them, they played very, very well tonight, a very well-coached squad. And, man, that running back, Landon williams Callis, man, keep your eye on that kid in years to come, not just at the high school level, but with the way he ran the ball tonight, could get some looks at the college level as well. I read in one of our uh, chats here, he has a lot of offers already, so... Give him some credit there. He played very well tonight for Randall. So they are going to be getting, they, with how the games have panned out tonight, Fort Bend Marshall will not move from the three seed. So Randall gets Fort Bend Marshall here at Trailer Stadium next week, and that's going to be a heavyweight bout to say the least. As for Huntsville, they will either get Texas City or Nederland. Either way, you will have to travel. Texas City to the southeast of Houston, Nederland towards the Golden Triangle near Beaumont, Port Arthur, and in Orange. So a long travel ahead for the Hornets. So we'll keep our eye on that again. Stay tuned to our social media as to when we get those updates and we're able to disseminate them out for all of you still tuning in. Brian, before we go, just your final thoughts. Uh, tough loss tonight, obviously, but you know what? Next week, everybody shows up zero and zero. So, you know, there'll be a level playing field. Yeah, we have to travel and you know that that's all right, man. That's that's football. That's what you got to do. They're going to make the adjustments they need to make and they're going to be watching film on whomever they play next week, and uh, the Hornets will be prepared. Absolutely, they will be. A very well-coached team. They've played well all year long. They finished the regular season 5-5, five and 4-2 five, and two out of the district, a step up from how they played a year ago, and a definite step, step up, excuse me, from how it was two years ago missing the postseason. So the Hornets trending in the right direction, and boy, are they going to be looking good in the days and weeks and really months and years at large to come? So, again, next week is the bye district round of the 2023 Texas UIL 5A playoffs as the Hornets start their road to state. Again, stay tuned to our Facebook and Twitter page at KSAM1017 to get updates on broadcast date, time, and opponent for next week's contest. They either get Texas City or Nederland on the road coming up next week. And that will do it for us here tonight. In Richmond, Texas, at Trailer Stadium. Again, your final. Randall wins 35-2-6 over your Huntsville Hornets tonight. Tonight's broadcast of Huntsville Hornets football on 101.7 KSAM and the Hornet Nation Broadcast Network is copyrighted for the private use of our audience. Any other use of this broadcast or any other transmission or accounts of the game without the express written consent of 101.7 KSAM and Huntsville High School Athletics is strictly prohibited. Tonight's broadcast was executively produced by Jordan Smith and studio produced by Colin Neal back at the station here tonight in Huntsville. Big thank you to Colin as well. And for on behalf of our entire crew, Luke Scott down on the sidelines for us. Our crew down below is Christian Cortez and Eric Mays. Kendall Morris, our social media director. And to the folks here at Lamar Consolidated ISD and Huntsville ISD. For my broadcast partner, Brian Adams, I'm Carlos Zimmerman. Thanks for tuning in tonight again. Huntsville Falls to Randall, 35-2-6 to close out the 2023 regular season. Again, stay tuned to our social media for updates on the playoff matchup and the bi-district round coming up next week. We thank you very much for joining us all through the regular season. We will see you in the postseason coming up next week. Have a great rest of your Thursday evening, friends. And as always, my friend here on the count of three, let's give a big one, two, three, Stingham Hornets, one, two, three. Stingham, Stingham Hornets. Hornets. Good night, God bless, and so long from Southwest Houston in Richmond, Texas. We'll see you next week.
AB Squared Self Storage is your local go-to self-storage facility that can help give you the extra space you need, big or small. From non-climate and climate-controlled storage to parking spaces for your car, boat, trailer, and RV, they have it all. AB Squared Self Storage has 24-hour computerized gate access, around-the-clock security camera monitoring, no long-term lease commitment, and convenient payment options. Give them a call today at 936-755-5000 or reserve your space online at www.ab2selfstorage.com. This has been the AB Squared Self Storage Hornets Post Game Show on the Hornet Nation Broadcast Network. Powered by K Sam Sports. The 17th Annual Radio Mash, presented by Bill Fick Ford, is December 6th and 7th at the HEB parking lot in Huntsville. Will you please answer the call once again and give generously? Your donation of toys, food, pet supplies, and gift cards stay in Huntsville and Walker County. To aid local families and children, you make a smile happen. Thank you. From all of us at 101.7 KSAM. Hey y'all, Josh Ward here for Bill Fick Ford in Huntsville. Good country music and Ford trucks just go hand in hand. And for the best customer service, the place to go is Bill Fick Ford. Not only do they offer a great selection of inventory, it's a great place to do business. And at Bill Fick Ford, our first responders, our veterans, and active military always receive an appreciation bonus. Stop in today for the best deals on the new Ford F-150 or build your own while the order bank is open. Shop online at BillFickFordHuntsville.com. Yeah, from joyful occasions to the unexpected, First Franklin Financial makes loans for living, offering fixed rates and flexible terms on loans up to $15,000. The next time you're looking for some extra cash to help make ends meet, come see the friendly Franklin folks or visit us at 1FFC.com to learn more. All loan terms and APRs depend on meeting our underwriting and income criteria and may require collateral. First Franklin Financial Corporation is licensed by the Virginia State Corporation Commission CFI 215, Georgia Residential Mortgage Licensee 5656, MMLS number 141654, not available in North Carolina. Exceeding all expectations for three generations, you can call us day or night. McWilliams Heating, Cooling, and Plumbing provides service you can salute from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. seven days a week with no overtime fees. Check our current air conditioning and plumbing service offers and schedule online today at callmcwilliams.com. That's a TLCLA 2150. All of East Texas knows when your AC goes, we got the best service round by far. We're not comfortable. I'll tell you why. Hey y'all, Josh Ward here for Bill Fick Ford in Huntsville. Good country music and Ford trucks just go hand in hand. And for the best customer service, the place to go is Bill Fick Ford. Not only do they offer a great selection of inventory, it's a great place to do business. And at Bill Fick Ford, our first responders, our veterans, and active military always receive an appreciation bonus. Stop in today for the best deals on the new Ford F-150 or build your own while the order bank is open. Shop online at BillFickFordHuntsville.com. Yeah, boy. Huntsville ISD is the best place for children to be. We offer a full day pre-K center to advanced career and college options, along with a variety of extracurricular activities and award-winning fine arts, band and athletics programs, an excellent child nutrition and bus transportation services, bilingual ESL and GT programs, special education services, and a career and technical education program that provides multiple certification and licensing options for students. Visit Huntsville-ISD.org. It's a great day to be a Hornet. We're building champions, everyone, every day. Shouldn't you be getting ready for winter? And at Gilbert Mechanical, we are, and we want to help you prepare too. The first place to start is in the attic. With energy costs rising, conserving the energy you have goes hand in hand with reducing the amount you use. In most homes, up to 40% of the home's energy escapes through the attic. By increasing the insulation in your attic, you could save up to 20% on your air conditioning costs. That's why McGilbert Mechanical will come to your home and give a free estimate on what it will take to get your home well insulated. Call McGilbert Mechanical at 936 291 2640 at McGilbert Mechanical. We care about your comfort. Hey folks, it's Steven over here at Adams Furniture. We're your Huntsville, Texas hometown furniture store. Come in and see why we carry the top brands with great customer service. We carry brands such as Tempur-Pedic, Sealy Hybrid, Sarda Mattresses. We have the biggest selection of Lazy Boy recliners, double reclining sofas, reclining love seats. We have all-American made hardwood bedroom furniture, living room furniture, all-American made lift chairs. All this is in stock and ready for delivery at Adams Furniture. We are cheaper in the country. Shop local with us and save your money. It's Adams Furniture, 30 State Highway and 75 North and 10th Street. I'm Jerry Larson at Reliable Auto Parts, your auto parts plus store in Huntsville, Texas. Having great products, excellent quality, and outstanding prices. This is what you can do. 
expect from reliable parts where you can purchase all your car care products maintenance supplies and auto parts our services and in-house store offerings are designed to keep your vehicle and motorized machine in proper working condition reliable parts your auto parts store 10 11 11th street huntsville 295-5747 this has been a KSAM Sports presentation. The 2023 Hornet season is proudly presented by Bill Fick Ford and by Advantage Specialties, AB Squared Self Storage, A and D Propane, Adams Furniture, Charlie's Used Cars, First Franklin Financial, Gamers Grow, Hardfield Florist, Huntsville Independent School District, Huntsville Truck and Tractor Kubota, MRC Creekside, McGilberry Mechanical Heating and Cooling, Mo. And Moke Attorneys at Law, Murray Insurance and Financial Services, Nelson Amaya Collision Center, Northside Baptist Church, Pinnacle Realty Advisors, Texas Department of Criminal Justice, Texpress Urgent Care Center, The Woodlands Financial Group, Wiesner Huntsville, McWilliams and Sons Heating, Cooling, and Plumbing, University Heights Baptist Church. From Carlos Zimmerman and Brian Adams, thanks for listening.